Hello guys and welcome to my necromancer class. Don't forget to support original author AER0182. Now let's get to the next chapters. Hope you enjoy. Chapter 126. Scree. A distant cry of the beast sounded from the exit passage, causing Jay to wake up. The skeletons were nowhere to be found, comma, probably still chasing after it. It seemed that only a few seconds had passed since he was knocked unconscious. MMHHHJ murmured lightly from a sense of pain and nausea. Jay sat up. It was hard to think. He felt a strange pressure behind his nose. The first thing he realized was that the light in here was too bright. It actually hurt his eyes. It felt like rubber bands were snapping in his head the longer he looked. He fixed his eyes on the dark room that the creature was originally in, staring for a moment. He knew he wanted to go there, but not how to, his mind seemed to be different. Since it was hard to think, he paused for a moment before slowly standing up, heading into the dark room where the creature was. Some of the light from the glyphs behind the throne was still getting in, and somehow it felt painful. So he turned around, staring into the dark corners of the room. As he sat, he began to hear a strange sound. A quiet, consistent tapping. He wouldn't have noticed it if he wasn't sitting here quietly. Despite it being quiet, each time it tapped it felt like a wave rolled across his brain from each ear. Jay then felt something cold on his face. He wiped his face, and some of it went into his mouth. The taste of iron traveled through his mouth. It was a nosebleed. Jay couldn't think of what to do about his nose each time the tap sound came. It disrupted any thought patterns he had, comma, and soon he forgot about it. For now, he just sat there, staring into the darkness. It was like he was daydreaming, yet with no thoughts. Doing nothing had never felt so good. He felt a sense of sleepiness, but he decided to resist it, comma, he was in a dungeon after all. After some time he somehow came to his senses. It was like he woke up. Time had passed. Maybe minutes or maybe hours. There was no way to tell. Despite sitting there staring into the darkness, it seemed like he was sleeping. Though he was awake, comma, the lights were on and no one was home. Jay turned to look at the light, thankfully it no longer hurt his eyes, comma, though. The feeling of turning his head felt like it made his brain rattle in his skull. It was painful to move too quickly. MMMHH he let out a pained, tired groan as he rubbed his head. My shield. My shield and hammer. He slowly went back to the room. Scratching the back of his head, there was something crusty there. What the? He grabbed some and looked at it, oh, more blood. Great. He could stand the light now, but he wouldn't look directly at it. He found his shield and hammer lying near the pillar that he crashed into. The pillar itself had some blood on it from where he connected. Damn, I guess that the creature was going for the exit, not for me. Jay felt a little silly as he checked his health. HP, 87, slash 93. Not as much damage as I thought. I must have taken it all to the head though. Jay looked towards the exit. It must have escaped since there were no scanners to activate the giant statue's dam. It's still out there somewhere. Jay willed two of the skeletons to come back to him, while leaving two out there to hunt for it. The creature was low health, especially after the uncaring rip skill, so two could surely finish it off. The problem was that the creature was faster than the skeletons, comma, it would eventually get away. Now, Jay looked around the room. It was finally safe for him to search. Well, safe enough anyway. That damn tapping noise. Jay headed back to the dark room. He was as annoyed at the sound as he was curious. He had to shield his eyes as he pulled out his luminous orb. His head and eyes were still not quite right. For a moment he stood there quietly as his ears adjusted once more. He listened attentively. Tap tap tap. Over there he turned his head and walked towards it. Slowly, he came to a pile of rubble on the ground. But it wasn't just any rubble. It was Helvetian statue parts. Hum. It seemed to form a circle, and he walked close to the center, his light slowly revealing more. Inside the center were more Helvetian body parts, along with some various bones and other parts. Maybe it's a stockpile for the creature. But what the hell was that tapping sound? As Jay got to the center, there was a small depression. The pile of different creature parts was a donut-shaped comma it was a nest. He found the source of the sound. A black human head looked up at him, its jaw also slack. Its attached to its neck was a slug-like body which had two arms with long blades sticking out from where the forearm would be attached. It seemed that it used these blades to crawl around, comma, but not only that. Tap tap tap. Slowly, 
It was chipping away at the dead stone soldiers in front of it, sliding tiny pieces down its throat. The fuck so that's why their jaws must be slack they were destroyed by the black stone, maybe. Perhaps it's just decay though. Jay looked at its every decaying face, even parts of the cheeks had rotted through. It seems like that black stone has to get into the system to make it immortal or at least slow the decay process. He figured, watching the little horror clink away at more of the stones and body parts around it. Now what do I do with you? Jay wasn't sure if he should kill it or keep it as a pet comma could, he even train it though. And what would it become? Chapter 127. Tap, 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 tap. Weird little creature Jay thought, still watching it shovel broken bits of stone and bone into its swelling jaw. He didn't dare to move closer and touch it, lest it suddenly do something wild like jump up and suck onto his face, comma, Jay. Would let his skeletons do the dirty work, naturally. Of course, he could still analyze it. Half-bred Menatopod level 1. HP 5 slash 5. Skills. Amalgamation, comma, body parts. Consumes, comma, body parts to grow stronger. Dire blades, comma, arms. The creature slashes its target with its saber talons. 0.3 damage per successful hit. Semi-Aphrodite degradation. Unwhole. Its soul split in two, forever yearning to be made whole. Nesting. Description. The result of unchecked, twisted magical experiments, combined with a yearning for offspring. Such low health completely defenseless he felt sorry for the pathetic creature. It could barely crawl away. In fact, it didn't even bother as it went back to eating rocks. What a cursed existence. Oh. Jay smiled as he kept reading its skill, finally seeing its semi-Aphrodite degradation ability. So you're like its baby his grin turned a little more sly. A glint of murderous intent in his eyes as he realized the parent would probably not abandon half its soul. It seems like your parent gave you half of its soul. That's pretty messed up. He almost felt sorry for it. Wait, that means it was technically your own choice to do this. What kind of batshit crazy scientist lets themselves become a monster that splits its own soul up to reproduce? Jay shook his head in disgust. Over time. It seemed that chaos reigned supreme, as the scientists mutated themselves and lost their minds, comma, and the more twisted they became, the more twisted their ideas. It was like a feedback loop of semi-magical mutation. He looked at the creature, still desperately clinking away at its nest trying to consume more to get stronger, comma, this was all it knew. Poor little bastard if I ever become like that, I hope someone will kill me. A ferocious smile then appeared on Jay's face. Good thing I'm here to kill you. What a blessing I am to you he smugly grinned, though his eyes looked like a predator. The assistant creature having offspring meant that there was a good chance it would come back. This was great news for Jay, as now he would have another chance to kill it. Now I suppose daddy or mommy, whatever, it will come back for you. So all I have to do is wait. Two of the skeletons returned just as Jay planned his trap. He walked towards the other room. Having a strange feeling as he planned the pyramid trap, since it seemed backwards, comma, shouldn't the dungeon be making the trap for him? I guess I'm not locked in here with the monsters. They're locked in here with me, he shrugged. Jay had his skeletons pick up the little baby-sized creature and shove it into one of the cages. The little fiend responded with screechy little cries, but Jay totally ignored it. It will be better if you cry, go ahead, call for help, he smiled. Jay went back to the main room as he planned his trap. Hum, how am I going to keep the assistant in here when it comes back? A series of thoughts ran through Jay's mind as he thought about what to do. Collapse a pillar to block off the assistant. Hold a knife to the baby's throat. Just try to kill it really quickly. As he looked at the passage, the solution hit him like a truck. Oh, it's so obvious. I just need to close the door and seal it again. Duh. It was the simple, elegant solution. And it should work too. The door was keeping this thing in standing the test of time over the centuries. So it easily passed the durability test. Jay willed his other two skeletons to return as well as he thought about how his trap would work practically. He would keep one skeleton in the room with the half-bread, while himself and the other three skeletons would hide behind the pillars in the main throne room. Jay also extracted bones from his gauntlet, making a small pile of bones next to the entrance. When the creature returned, Jay would sneak into the exit passage close the door and place the heavy iron bar across it. However, he first needed to test something. Jay unsummoned Blue and closed the door, comma, then he tried to raise the skeleton from the other side of the door. Arise. 
Damn it. Come on he crouched down. Holding his gauntlet to the bottom of the door, he closed his eyes and pictured the pile of bones in front of him. Arise. This time, the necrotic green mana left his gauntlet and slipped itself under the door, like it was searching for something comma then a larger amount of it left the gauntlet. Clink, clack. Hearing a few noises from behind the door, Jay confirmed it was a successful summoning. Good, he thought, opening the door again and stepping back into the room. Hum, he looked at his shield. I guess I won't be needing this since I won't be fighting. Blue, here you go. He handed his precious Deathwalker's sentry to the human skeleton. After giving his shield to the skeleton, it seemed that holding the hammer in one hand and the shield in the other was just a little too much for the skeleton to handle. They were too heavy. Hum, maybe next level then. He consoled his skeleton, hoping it would level up soon. All the skeletons were level 3, but they could currently all reach a max level of 4, thanks to Jay's necrotic mastery. They would only gain more strength as they leveled up, but for now it was quite low. Instead, the skeletons were incredibly dexterous, daggers and spears were more suited to them at the moment. Perhaps they would get more bulky and could handle heavier weapons later, but in the meantime, their ideal weapons were light. The heavy hammers only worked out since they dual wielded them. Soon, he thought. Jay assumed a crouched position behind the pillar. Now all he had to do was wait. And wait. And wait. Hum, maybe it abandoned its kid. Jay thought, not a very good role model. Hopefully it only went out for a pouch of tobacco. Maybe I can entice it to come home. Jay took out his trusty one damage cooking knife which had since blunted, chipped and rusted, and no, he was not going to cook a meal to entice it to come back. He had something far more sinister planned. I suppose I'm not a very good role model either. He shrugged, handing the low damage knife to one of his skeletons. Only cut it once. I don't want it dead not yet anyway. The skeleton then sped off into the room comma its target was the half-bred abomination. The creature, despite only taking one damage, began to squeal incessantly. Jay waited and waited as he suffered through the mind-numbing squeals. It seemed that this was taking forever, comma, he slowly got frustrated. Jay walked slowly to the passageway, ignoring the shrill screeching coming from the next room, as he stared into the tunnel for a moment. Where the hell are you? Suddenly, Jay's shield lightly squeezed his arm. He looked down at it, eyes bulging for a moment as he realized it had seen something in the darkness. Immediately, he rushed behind the pillar, while mentally commanding his skeletons to get into position and hide. Then, he listened. Tap 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 tap. It seemed that the creature was sneaking back slowly, cautiously, seeing the bone pile near the doorway. It seemed like that gave it some reassurance, comma, perhaps. The undead skeletons assaulting it had all died somehow. It was no longer as intelligent as it once was, so it didn't question how they would have died. Unfortunately for the assistant, the skeletons were still there waiting silently, brandishing their hammers behind the pillars. Time did not matter to the undead. Each one of them was ready to strike a single thought from Jay, and they would enter battle, becoming the berserk, unmerciful skeletal warriors they are. Shree, click click click. It made some strange hissing and clicking sounds, very different to the hissing previously. Is it trying to lure out the skeletons? Jay wondered, shaking his head with a smug smile. It won't work with me controlling them. He shrugged, try all you want. Ach. Ah. Uh, the half-bred cooed, replying back in its own way from the other room. Oh, it was calling its offspring. Tap 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 tap. The creature fully entered the throne room, ignoring the bone pile as it began to head into the dark room. Jay only smiled hearing this. With each of the tapping steps of its sword-like legs, the trap was closing. Slowly, its fate was being sealed. Chapter 128 Jay crouched and snuck low across the room. He gazed over at the assistant. Half of its body was in the dark room, and half was out. This was good enough for Jay's trap. Jay checked its health while he sneaked by. It had been almost an hour, so it would have regenerated somewhat. The assistant comma level 8. HP 36.5 slash 121. Hum, it was around 17 before. That's quite fast could it have found more body parts. Surely the creature would have found the dead dehexapod, manaton and six spearmen statues near the entrance of the pyramid. He crept into the passage and began to close the heavy door. Thankfully it didn't squeak as it closed slowly. Next, the iron bar. It was so heavy that he could only lift one end at a time. 
Dune. Shit, Jay thought, hoping the assistant didn't notice the sound from the iron bar bracing the door. Hopefully the bar would hold if only half of it was slotted into place. Scree. Hiss. Fuck. Jay thought as he ordered all the skeletons to attack. Boom, the creature ran into the door with full force, probably not even realizing it was shut as it created a deep heavy thud noise. Scree. It wailed either from pain or anger as it realized it was now trapped in here once more. Jay sensed that the skeletons had moved in and were about to launch a synchronized strike while the creature had its back turned. The necrotic sensibility sure was handy. Huh, I wonder if you can even sneak attack with hammers. Squash smack d-o-o-n-g-g. -G. Hiss. Well, I guess it doesn't matter comma if it dies, it dies. He smiled. The skeletons struck, the beast recoiled and began striking back with its neck mounted whips, and reached out its hand once more to execute one of the skeletons. Your perennial creature level 3 has been slain. Damn, another blue one down. Jay didn't bother to put the iron bar into the other slot of the door comma it seemed that one side was enough to keep it in. He crouched down as he raised another skeleton. Arise. Unknown to the creature, a skeleton popped up right behind it. The skeleton still needed to reach its hammer to do decent damage. But since there were three others attacking, it was not very hard to simply sprint around and retrieve it. If the assistant's face still could perform emotions, it would look completely confused. There were four undead attacking it. Then it killed one now there were only four remaining. What the hell was happening? Surely it was going insane comma well. More insane. But there was not much more time to think about this during battle. Its health was dropping fast, and it had to focus. 26 slash 121. 20 slash 121. Only a few more hits and it was dead. Already its natural armor and black hide was smashed and ripping. Its life slowly leaving its body, as its dark red blood oozed out. It looked around to retreat. But it was already at the door which was somehow closed again. Its only option was to go back into the room, getting some distance from the skeletons. 14 slash 121. Out of desperation, it jumped up onto a pillar and coiled around it up high comma out of range of the fearsome level 3 skeletons. It wasn't a hard task with its many legs comma though it was heavy, it wouldn't be able to hold on for long. The sword-like legs were already making deep gashes and grazes in the pills, small pebbles and cracks forming as it tried to hold itself up. Hiss. It let out its frustration at the skeletons, deeply hissing, threatening to pounce one of the skeletons, and end them in one hit. This of course had no effect on the skeletons. There was no such thing as fear to the undead. For a moment however they paused, not from the hiss, but because they were considering how to attack. Master's order has to be fulfilled. Master's order has to be fulfilled. The next thing they did would have made Jay proud. One of them held its hammer by the end and began spinning, swirling around. The creature turned its head to the side, confused. Swoosh, crunch. The skeleton suddenly released its hammer and sent it flying at the assistant, doing just as much damage as a normal attack. 10 slash 121. The creature would have sweated stressfully if it had any skin left, these undead were doing fucking hammer throws at it. And without warning, two more hammers came flying. Immediately the creature dropped to the ground again and ran throughout the room, avoiding the two flying hammers. It was clear now that nowhere was safe, neither high nor low. It attempted to thrash about and speed past the skeletons, comma maybe, if it was quick enough it could kill them all, without taking any more hits. The black hand ripped another skull off its socket once more as it sped by, another skeleton was slashed at by the dire blade legs. Good two down only four skeletons left now. 4 slash 121. Unfortunately it took another hit. Its time was almost up. It was not long for this world, and its time was short. If there was any hope for it to live even just a sliver it would cease it with all it had even giving up the last half of its soul. Suddenly, the door opened comma but how it didn't matter. It was hope. The creature twisted and sped through the skeletons without taking a single hit, and just as it was about to exit through the door, something stood in its way. Something which made its whole body tense up in fear. The human was somehow still alive despite being left alone in a room with these undead. The human which somehow ripped its bottom jaw bone off, causing it so much pain before. Unlike before, the human now looked like the only monster here, while a gentle smile was on its face. 
Its eyes looked hungry, like it would consume whatever would stand before it. Hiss. The creature was going too fast to stop, and it couldn't retreat either comma it simply would have to charge through it let out a warning. But this human didn't move. Why did it feel threatened from this human's gaze? Seeing the creature charge towards him, Jay lifted his gauntlet. Uncaring Rip, he whispered. The gauntlet activated comma suddenly. The creature paused in its tracks as it writhed in pain. It was like it hit an invisible wall and was now being held up somehow. Then the pain began the pain was so great that it couldn't even howl. It had never felt so much pain even after all these experiments. Even the splitting of its soul was less painful than this. Why was it not dying? Why couldn't it just die? What unnatural force was keeping it alive through this pain and suffering? Suddenly, the remainder of its rib cage split outwards. All its organs, along with its two dark beating hearts, were displayed, comma, but soon they too were ripped and pushed out as bones poked through the back of them. Finally, the spine revealed itself pushing everything else aside. Why couldn't it just have fucking died? Why did it have to live through this? Its intestines, bladder and stomach burst out. The stomach was punctured, and acid began burning holes into the rest of its insides. More and more of the spine pushed through its flesh, nothing could stop it. What kind of sick, abominable magic was this? Finally, all of its body went limp as the nerves were severed from the head. Before that however, its eyes were deeply sunken as the brain was pulled downwards. Fuck, this is pretty gruesome Jay thought, almost looking away from the horrific display before him comma and he was the one doing it comma and without any mercy. Even this seemed a bit too harsh for Jay's liking, he did mildly torture its offspring as well, which was pretty evil. If this thing could come back as a spirit it would definitely haunt him. Perhaps even this display would haunt him for the next few days. Finally, the spine was ripped out from its body and flew into the grasp of Jay's gauntlet. The gauntlet began crushing and absorbing it automatically. The execution was successful. 1501X. The assistant crashed harmlessly to the ground, still corroding in its own stomach juices. Jay harvested the rest of the bones from its body. Yet there were not many to gain, as most of them had either been replaced or had mutated into the black stone. Huh. I guess only the most vital bones are the ones that weren't converted. Jay took note of which bones were extracted from its body. The spine, the skull, the scapula, and the collar bones. Either these were too important to replace, or the creature simply didn't bother comma he couldn't be sure. Jay felt like he gained some insight into necromancy, though unfortunately he got no new notifications. Hum, nice work skeletons. Jay went to collect the bone pile, as well as the bones from the dead skeletons. Now what do I do with the half-bread? Chapter 129. After looting the beast, there was nothing left, except a soul stone comma Jay had already taken the remaining bones of course. Soul stone comma empty, x1. Hum, not very lucrative Jay pursed his lips and went into the dark room. Something seemed different as he walked towards the cage with the half-bread. The creature no longer cried, screeched or wailed. Was it sleeping? Jay retrieved his trusty butcher knife, that his skeleton dropped next to the cage. Before he checked inside the cage, comma, it was silent because it was dead. On first glance it appeared to only be resting, as if the little abomination had screeched itself to sleep. But after poking it, Jay confirmed it was dead. What? But the skeleton only would have done one damage to it. And it screeched after it was stabbed so. How? There was no pool of blood around it, so it definitely didn't bleed out. I wonder how it died. Jay had his skeletons check the room for any other life forms that could have killed it, comma nothing. Oh well. He shrugged, attempting to loot it. Not all mysteries have to be solved. Soul stone, comma empty, x1. Weird. With the assistant dead, Jay checked his hidden quest. Hidden quest, comma slay the assistant. Slay the assistant. Progress. 2 slash 2 slayed. Complete. Collect rewards. Two slayed. I guess that half-bred thing counted as the assistant too, since its soul was in it. Huh. He shrugged. Jay wasn't too concerned with the ambiguous quest. He was just glad to complete it as he collected rewards, comma not. That there were rewards other than progress. It seemed like a pretty lame reward to Jay. But he didn't care too much anyway, comma this pyramid had already given him a massive power boost. Besides, perhaps there was more loot after he made more progress. After a quick search of the room he didn't find anything of much interest, though the nest the creature had made contained some bones. 
so he added those to his gauntlet. Jay returned to the main chamber. It was brighter now as a third glowing circle was now lit up. On the throne, somehow, a small stone effigy of the assistant had appeared. It was strange to say the least, who would make a miniature statue of that monster. Jay obviously went ahead and tried to place it in his inventory, thinking it was some sort of trophy. But it seemed it was part of the dungeon, he frowned lightly. Or oh, it looks so cool too. He tried to pick it up, but it wouldn't budge either. It was like it was glued to the throne. Oh, well he smashed it with his hammer. At least he would get some enjoyment out of it. Thankfully, it seemed that this was meant to happen as the three glyph circles began to slowly rotate and soon each of them stopped. It was like they were locking into place. A red wave of energy suddenly traveled across the glyphs and they all disappeared. Jay and his undead team were embraced by the darkness once more. Gah. All around them, deep groaning sounds came from stone grinding on stone within the pyramid walls as they listened in the darkness. It sounded like the whole thing was about to collapse. This probably would have induced even more fear if Jay didn't have a monster class resisting the seemingly passive fear effect of the pyramid. With a bored expression, Jay pulled out his luminous orb to see what was happening. The only thing that was different was some dust coming from the ceiling. Dune. A heavy noise reverberated through the room. Suddenly a large stone block slid down across the exit. Jay was trapped. Groaning stone sounds were still coming from the walls. And finally behind the throne, a stone wall lifted up as more of the bluish glyph light came from under it as it raised upwards, finally reflecting in Jay's eyes, as he was in awe at what he saw. Wow the light of course came from another glyph, but this one was very different. Jay walked slowly into the hidden room behind the throne, as he looked upwards to see how big this glyph was. The glyph was huge and rectangular, perhaps nearly half the size of the pyramid, comma, the pyramid itself, almost touched the clouds above. Hum, if those three small circular glyphs caused the rooms to open, then what the hell does this one do? Jay raised a brow. Surely it would be powerful. In front of the glyph was another throne, comma, more majestic and larger than the assistant's throne in the previous room. A series of tubes, cords, wires, magic circles, glowing cylinders and other strange instruments were in an array around the throne, all feeding into one life form. This time, the throne was occupied. Third Academy, Mirror Reality 34. Students of the Third Academy, things are going to be quite different. Next year some restructuring is taking place. We hope it will make you more cohesive and teamwork oriented he cleared his throat. I know we're better than the other academies. While we didn't win the war games this year, you made the academy proud and lived up to our motto comma he who stands with me shall be my brother. Some of the students looked inspired, but some looked bitter. Their academy placed last in the war games comma they were the weakest, they felt pathetic. I have always treated you as professionals, and I won't take up more of your time, so I will make this short and sweet. Norgrim gazed across the cohort as his tone and demeanor changed to one of an old hunter. The rumors of a powerful monster class coming to join us are true. The crowd murmured and began to chatter as Norgrim expected they would. After allowing it for a moment he raised his hands to hush the audience. Now, in light of this, we are opening new higher level dungeons to the first years. The crowd grew loud again with differing reactions. So unfair I had to wait till second year. This damn shitty academy. Fuck yeah. We can run the higher level dungeons, finally. Better now than waiting a few more months. All those hotheads are gonna get themselves killed. Did they really think this through? Meh, all I do is craft and forge. I never go into dungeons anyway. Yeah, all I do is work out. No need to fight anything. PFF, you're still level 3 after a year. Stop being a baby and go kill some shit. Or, I hope I don't get left behind. I won't leave you behind. He who stands with me shall be my brother, remember? Norgrim waved his hands, hushing the audience once more. With the increased risk, we have added a protective measure which will only apply to first years, which are as follows. Parties will now be formed at the start of the year. You have to stick with your team until the very end of the year. If one of them perishes, you will all repeat the first year. Again, this will only apply to first years starting next year. Despite it not affecting any of the current students, many were shocked. How the hell were they meant to assemble cohesive teams now? What about the guys who don't even go into dungeons? Of course, Norgrim already had plans for this. Feral Plains, level 3 dungeon, south of Losla. Huff huff huff. 
Matheson's clothes were sticking to him with sweat, he was surrounded by a ring of corpses on a grassy hill. After he had just killed another swarm of yellow grobs, monsters which were essentially one-eyed, two-footed, round-jumping balls of teeth. While this was a level 3 dungeon, it was not instanced, and hence was not bound by the conventional rules, comma, the lowest level of the enemies in this non-instanced dungeon was level 1. This didn't mean it would be easy though. The sheer number of enemies here made up for their individual weakness. Meanwhile, the weather was summer within this dungeon, combined that with the vigorous battles. Some would even suffer heat stroke, and have to either leave or die. All around, many other groups of adventurers were on different hills, each fighting their own brutal battles. These types of monsters had to be dealt with on a hill. Otherwise, they could simply roll right after you, the swarm surrounding you as they latched onto your flesh with their razor-sharp spiny teeth. The hill would force them to crawl upwards, slowing down their swarming speed, comma, though, even then it was still a challenge. Thanks for saving me a mana crafter behind Matheson called out. Matheson squinted with disdain, remembering how he was weak in fact, he still felt weak. The mana crafter had no hope here, as he only had a high damage single target attack. It was quite foolish for his party to come here. Next time save yourself. Matheson bitterly said, he despised weakness comma though more so in himself than others. Ah, uh, right the mana crafter awkwardly scratched his head. He thought about asking to party with Matheson but quickly shot down the idea as soon as he heard Matheson's harsh reply. Now that they weren't within the aggression range of any monsters, the mana crafter promptly left the dungeon. Next time, he would find a party that didn't leave him behind, as they desperately rushed to another hill. Matheson began looting the hundreds of tiny corpses around him. Some of their bodies rolled back down the hill before he could reach them, only to be consumed by a smaller swarm of them. Matheson easily made short work of them since he was now level 8, not to mention his dexterity-based swordsman class. It was like a perfect match, he was like a demon to the grobs. He was a little high level for this dungeon, but he was solo too. To him, this was a decent workout, plus a way to get easy X, the last battle, giving him 600. The grobs didn't always drop loot, but it was enough for most adventurers to save some money for better weapons. Yellow Grob IX-63, who used these, and for what purposes, meh, who cares, as long as they paid for them this was the mindset of most adventurers here most. Matheson was different, he had other plans compared to other adventurers who were simply trying to get by. He had zero thoughts about the low level loot, since he had plenty of money after all, comma, what he was trying to do was build the act of looting into his muscle memory, making it like a natural instinct. He would be relying on selling loot when he eventually got cut off from his father's wealth. But for now it was all as good as trash to him. For him, battles were not really about loot. They were just another stepping stone to his strength, each one making him stronger than the last. Only strength ensures freedom he thought, gazing into one of the yellow grob eyes before crushing it in his hand, the juices coating the grass. He imagined that crushed eye as himself in the hands of someone more powerful. Other adventurers would think he was mad if they could see him crushing some precious loot, but Matheson only gained from doing this. Since he imagined himself being crushed, comma, it created a drive in him, a hunger, and so he continued onwards towards the next hill. Chapter 130 Jay gazed at the being on the throne. It was old, wrinkled, and seemed like it was on the verge of decaying. Parts of its skin were black, but somehow seemed to retain its life, comma, of course. Its life force was driven by intense hate, as well as all the strange chemicals and magic surrounding its chair. Is this a hexamist? Jay raised a brow, he couldn't be sure. Whatever it was, it was nothing like the soldiers or the lab experiments. There was not a single piece of the black stone on its body. It seemed that this one didn't go through with the altar conversion ritual. Despite living on somehow, it was still filled with just as much hate as when it sat down, its face locked in a constant grimace of bitter anger. Thankfully there was a trespasser to let out some anger onto comma Jay. The decrepit old thing in the throne slowly lifted its head, gazing at Jay. Jay analyzed it as soon as he made eye contact. Surely something on such an impressive throne would be strong, right? Estoba the Hexamus, comma level 2. HP 10 slash 10. Skills. Reconstitute. Brings soul and matter together. Description. One of the five grand hexamists of Holvetia, he guided others to a treasure he could not possess. 
someone had to perform the conversion ritual, and it was him. His only tool to become immortal and join his fellow soldiers was with his own research and laboratory materials. Unfortunately, time has not been kind to Estoba. Hum. Pretty dumb just find an immortality book like I did. It's not that hard. Jay chuckled, mocking what once was a brilliant mind comma now. It only had one skill left, and as much health as a level one soap rat. Slowly, its weak old hand moved off its leg. Hum, it can still move. Okay, what's it gonna do? Call a nurse. Slowly, still, it was raising its old hand up off its leg. It was on a mission that was a test of both its strength and undying. Well power comma but it was much too slow for Jay. Okay, you're getting there. Come on, you can do it old man. Jay encouraged it. It raised its hand a little higher, ever so slowly. Oh, fuck me, come on. We're waiting. I haven't got all day. It seemed that its hand was high enough, and it slowly moved its hand to the right now. Oh, sorry. We're closed. Please come back tomorrow. Jay smiled with a shitty, condescending grin. Suddenly the ancient hand smashed down on a tiny glyph on the arm of the throne with the force of a mighty butterfly. Two strange tubes suddenly rose up next to the throne. One was small and the other large. Oh, is this where you get your soup for breakfast, lunch and dinner? Jay continued to mock while something began floating through the tubes, as if in zero gravity. What the? Well, at least something is happening. One was filled with soul stones, while the other tube had skeleton bones. Huh, is this a reward? Well now I feel bad hey I'm sorry Estoba actually, now that I think of it, that stuff I said was pretty harsh. I don't know what got into me. I'm sore dash J put his apology on pause for a moment as Estoba's eyes began glowing. Suddenly, they glowed a bright blue as they were filled with mana. It seemed that while Estoba's level and health had dropped, and his skills had disappeared, he was still filled with his original mana capacity. A tidal wave of energy, comma, yet it was using it to activate its only skill, comma, reconstitute. Each soul stone mixed with the bones coming from the tube. Blue wisps of mana mixed with them as they floated together, creating cheap imitations of Jay's undead powers. The first thing made was a teepee of bones with a skull on top. The eyes of the skull glowed a pale blue as it came to life, and a slightly translucent orb of blue expanded out and stopped around itself and Estoba. It was some sort of magical energy shield. Huh, Jay's mouth was open in shock, you can make that from bones. Estoba had Jay's full attention now, as he created some insane energy barrier with bones and a soul stone. It didn't even occur to Jay that this was within the possibility of skeletal creation. Jay would definitely try to copy this later. But for now he analyzed it. Skull Shield Projector, comma level 3. HP 1 slash 1. Skills. Physical Projection. 50 slash 50 HP Energy Barrier. 1 HP per second projection regeneration. 50% melee damage mitigation. Cannot block slow moving objects. Requires power source, comma soul stone, comma 408 seconds left. Description. Amazing J gazed at the shield aura. He was starting to gain respect for the decrepit old husk of a man. Next, more bones floated through the tube, and this time, it didn't make a barrier projector. After having seen it countless times, it was clear to Jay what this was. PFF, let's see which is stronger, the real version or the knockoff. Jay smiled, but soon he wiped his grin off his face. Holvetian Skeletal Golem, comma level 5. 50 HP. Skills. Golem Strength. 20% extra damage. Golem Endurance. Regenerates 1 HP per second. Unarmed combat. 4.5 damage. Description. Oh shit. Not bad. You're level 2 and are summoning a level 5 minion. Jay wasn't even mad. He was impressed. Thankfully they don't have any weapons. Jay wasn't worried, comma, until he noticed that the two tubes were still filled with many bones and soul stones. There would be more of these things to fight. Shit. This could get messy. Jay got serious now as the enemy skeleton ran out of the energy shield. Jay didn't even need to tell his skeletons to attack, comma, the Holvetian skeletal golem. Was already in the midst of battle with his own troops. There was no need for it to defend Estoba as the energy shield stood strong. Thankfully, it was a 1 versus 4, so the golem was not really a threat, and the level 5 skeletal golem died before it could do any significant damage. Jay smiled, waiting for something. 
Oh, come on, no X. It's level 5. Bastard. He purses his lips, frowning. How would this mean my skeletons don't give X? That's handy to know he smirked. I suppose I could farm X if it allowed me to get some from this guy's minions. So it could be just him. I suppose I would have to test it some time. Another Helvetian skeletal golem was formed and engaged with Jay's skeletons. Blue did rush over to the barrier with its goal to slay Estoba. But the next enemy skeleton formed just before it could even begin attacking the barrier. It seemed that perhaps Jay should have stopped Estoba while the decrepit old man was raising his hand comma but if he didn't he would not have learnt of the cool skeletal energy shield. Jay considered this for a moment. If he let the current level 5 skeletal golem live, would Estoba summon another contraption similar to the skull shield projector for Jay to try and copy? This was perhaps the culmination of the efforts of a genius from the Holvetian Empire. Unknown to Estoba, he was now like a teacher to Jay, the first one Jay had ever found. That would give him some ideas about his necromancer class. It's worth a shot to try keep it busy. Jay commanded as his skeletons began running around the large room with the massive glowing glyph. Jay squinted as another skeleton was formed. Now Estoba had two level 5 skeletal golems running around the room. This was still manageable, so Jay gave it another chance before having them slain. Come on you old prick Jay squinted, make another skeletal contraption. Chapter 131 Come on you old prick Jay squinted, make another cool skeletal contraption. Suddenly, something different was being reconstituted. Four bones made a cross shape which were placed flat on the ground as the base of the structure, while some long femur bones made a tall column with a skull on top. It appeared that the skull had grown some thick bone hair, similar to dreadlocks, comma, but upon closer inspection, these were all tiny finger bones connected to each other, attached at the back of the skull. Jay watched silently as he was taking everything he could in, committing everything to memory. The skull then turned its head at one of the skeletons and opened its mouth. Trock, trock, trock. Oh, shit, it's a turret. It's a damn turret. Jay was as shocked as he was excited. Each finger bone that made up the turret's hair was pulled into the back of the skull, converted into what looked like a tiny throwing knife, and quickly shot out. Each of these strange knives made a ghostly wailing noise as they traveled through the air to meet their targets. Jay was figuratively drooling at the mouth. It was a simple looking design, but there was an elegance to it. Having only the bare bones needed to function comma literally and figuratively. Jay didn't even care that his skeleton was being attacked by it. But he wasted no time and quickly analyzed it. Dreadman turret comma level 3. HP 5 slash 5. Weeping kunai. Causes fear comma weak while airborne. 4 piercing damage. Requires ammunition comma bone. Fingers. Amazing. I could probably make my own ammunition with my scrimshaw skill. So that won't be a problem for me he grinned. Jay would definitely try to make a turret and an energy shield creature now. He didn't care how long he would have to experiment. It was simply too cool in his eyes. Estoba obviously didn't care what Jay thought. He didn't give Jay any rest as another level 5 skeletal golem was being crafted. Shit, give me a break. I was only joking before when I said the pipes were for soup. Jay finally had to be a bit more aggressive during the fight, comma, he... Couldn't just have his skeletons running around, being chased by a growing swarm of skeletal golems. He took out some bones from his gauntlet, making a pile as he got prepared to summon for when his skeletons fell in battle. Meanwhile, he had his skeletons begin to attack the level 5 golems, instead of run from them. Two level 5 skeletons went down, but so did two of his own skeletons. Jay quickly summoned them and made them retrieve their weapons. A third skeleton went down and Jay hastily resummoned it too. Minus four. Ah, Fu, a small knife was embedded in his leg. Minus four. Shit, it still hurts even though they're tiny. Jay raised his shield, causing it to take most of the damage instead of him, while he pulled these weird daggers out of his leg and abdomen. Minus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8. One, two, dot, dot, three, he gritted his teeth and held his breath as he yanked it out, causing even more damage. Fuck. He screamed through his gritted teeth as it made a bigger hole when it was ripped out. Minus two. Three skeletons were now working on taking down the shield. Another had died to a level five while Jay was distracted. Things were not looking good. After ripping out both of the knives, his skin quickly healed back up. 
though more of his HP drained from the extra damage he inflicted when he ripped the second one. Minus two. It was purely by chance that hammers happened to work really well against other skeletons. And Jay quickly re-summoned another skeleton to go attack the new level 5 skeletal golem. Before joining the others to help take down the energy shield. Truck truck truck. The skull turret continued to fire. But Jay made his skeletons ignore it. And keep wearing down the shield. Jay could easily keep the fight up as long as he had mana comma however. He had already summoned his skeletons four times. And while it was still fairly high. It was being drained far too quickly. The pressure was on. Another level 5 skeleton stepped out of the energy barrier, entering battle with his skeletons once more. Damn it, this can't go on for much longer. Jay decided to enter the fight. If he ran out of mana before this shield went down it was game over. Swinging his hammer at the shield, he was disappointed by the damage number. 6. What? Aren't I supposed to be doing at least 12 now? Jay analyzed the shield again, realizing it had 50% melee mitigation. Damn it. Jay began bashing away at the shield. If he was doing only 6, then his skeletons would be doing much less. The strength of the skeletons was only 13, having gained 1 per level since level 1. Each of them dealing a whopping 3.5 damage to this shield per hit. It really wasn't much, but at least when the 4 of them were hitting it, the damage added up. For now though, 2 of the skeletons were off dealing with another level 5 imitation skeleton. While a skeleton next to Jay was just about to crumble, after having 10 of those knives embedded in its body. Meanwhile, Estoba was pumping out even more of the level 5 skeletons. Damn it, I take back my apology you old bastard. 6. Jay smashed his hammer against the shield, causing it to flicker off for a moment. It would only take a single love tap to kill the shield projector, since it only had 1 HP. But Jay decided to try and preserve it so he could study it later. He made it clear in his mind that it was off limits, forcing the skeletons to avoid it too. Instead, Jay and his skeleton targeted the Deathman turret. It was doing too much damage to be left alive. 5. Despite its high damage, it went down in a single hit, having similarly low HP to the skull shield. In this time, another level 5 skeleton had formed. Then another, Damn it, the pipes are speeding up. It seemed that Estoba had managed to raise his other hand during this long fight to place it on another glyph, causing the pipes to speed up, comma, this allow more of his bones and soul stones to be reconstituted. You dirty fucker, Estoba. Jay barked. Meanwhile, the ancient Helvetian Estoba, still having a permanently angry face with furrowed brows, seemed to have an ever so small condescending smile on its face, as his two new skeletal golems stood before him comma though only one lashed out. One had to guard Estoba since the shield was down, so Jay and his skeleton only had to deal with one for now. Thankfully, Jay's other two skeletons had killed their target, but only one returned to Jay, since the other had died. Chapter 132 Doomed. Jay swung his hammer with one hand while raising a skeleton with the other. He was turning out to be a fearsome necromancer on the battlefield, despite his lazy start to this battle. Technically it was only a one versus one fight between Jay and Estoba, as without them, the skeletons wouldn't exist, comma, though anyone watching would think it was an intense fight, worthy of writing down somewhere. Not grand enough for the history books, but somewhere at least. Another level 5 skeletal golem rose at the same time Jay's fresh summon did. Slowly, Jay was being overwhelmed. His mana pool couldn't keep up if this continued. Fuck maybe I should run. My mana is getting dangerously low Jay thought. But remembered that the room he was in was currently sealed. There were no exits. He simply had to press on. Jay had to get more aggressive. So he took a risk and dashed forward comma right. Before Estoba summoned another golem. Jay paid for this, took a critical hit from one of Estoba's skeletons. Brah. The pain was immense as the skeleton ripped its knife hand out of his abdomen. It didn't matter now though. Jay was resolute in his attack plan. He smashed his hammer against the old man's arm. Crunch. It caused the ancient being's body to quiver from pain for a moment as its arm completely fell off. Its eyes were wide open now. Jay thought that if his hand moved off the glyph, it would perhaps slow down or stop the pies. Suddenly, some bubbles floated up from a cylinder attached to the throne, and Estoba went back to his normal placid self. He was nicely sedated by his elaborate automatic drug supply. Jay's abdomen healed at the same time. He attempted another hit, 
but was pushed away by the defending skeleton. Unfortunately, this brazen attack did nothing to slow down the speed of the pipes, it only disrupted a single summoning comma even Estoba's health was the same as before. Before the old man could start the summoning again, Jay grinned mischievously. Try next time, bitch. He blocked another attack from the skeleton as he reached out with his hand. Soul Stone, comma, fall, X1. He pocketed the soul stone which came from the smaller pipe. Shit, it has a soul in it. Jay didn't have time to think about this, as the next skeletal golem was being summoned. Jay decided to add all the bones nearby into his gauntlet too. The less resources Estoba had, the better. Meanwhile, another one of his skeletons went down, which Jay quickly brought right back. It was a confusing sight to the golems, as Jay's skeleton would turn into a useless pile of bones, before springing back up into a skeleton again, and smashing their skulls inwards. Jay checked his mana, it was truly dwindling now. There was some mana regen during the fighting, but now it was at dangerous levels, comma, he only had one more summon left, and that was it. Shit, Jay realized he needed more mana. Perhaps it was even more important than vitality and strength. Uncaring rip a femur, comma, upper leg, bone was ripped from an enemy skeleton, and crushed in his hands, comma, the enemy skeleton fell over, seemingly confused as what the hell just happened. Two more of the skeletal golems went down as Jay crushed one of their necks under his foot, comma, along, with two of Jay's skeletons. Jay insta-summoned his last one. Three skeletons and Jay versus one skeletal golem and Estoba. Immediately, the single golem got ganged up on. Jay was feeling a little slow now, since his mana was so low that he only just now realized something. Estoba, he stopped summoning golems. Suddenly, the skull shield reactivated. Inside the mana barrier was Estoba and Jay's three skeletons. Estoba was truly done now, he had no more defenses. Jay still didn't understand why it got so easy all of a sudden. He looked around for a moment. The skeleton pipe there's no more skeletons. Jay was puzzled. Perhaps his stockpile of skeletons ran out. He wondered before shrugging. Oh well, sucks to be him if he had more skeletons. Maybe he would have won, or at least made me use some of my trump cards. Jay nodded, glad he could hold onto his newly found acid shards. Still, he nearly had me in the first half, not gonna lie. Jay had his skeletons attack the throne Estoba was sitting on. There was no point attacking him directly, otherwise the strange throne would just heal him somehow, comma, though. It would be good if Jay wanted to torture the old man. However, Jay felt like he should give him at least a little mercy for all the rude things he said. So instead of smashing him to death, he went for his life support. As each jar and cylinder were smashed, each wire ripped out, each magic circle broken, the light slowly dwindled in Estoba's eyes he knew his time was short. Slowly however, he was raising his hand once more. Oh, not this again come on Jay rolled his eyes. Slowly, his hand was going higher and higher. Jay checked the throne quickly. There were no more glyphs left, so he was sure nothing dangerous would happen. Haven't got all day. Jay allowed it to happen. The ancient hexamist surely had no other tricks up his sleeve. Higher and higher it went, until it seemed like he was going to point at Jay. You, any time now old man what is it? Hum, what? Is there something on my face? Suddenly, his hand turned upside down, each of his fingers crunched up, except for one comma with his dying bit of strength he was. Hey, fuck you too. Jay finally realized what he was doing, and gave him the rude finger right back, right to his face. Decrepit old fuck, you should be thanking me for giving you a painless death. Suddenly he dropped his hand, his blue eyes went dark, never to glow again. Cheeky old bastard Jay smiled dot dot to be fair, I probably would have done the same thing. Despite Estoba's last action, Jay still felt a hint of sadness. A great mind was lost to death, a grand hexamist of Holvetia. It was nothing to celebrate about. 1000 X. Now, Jay snapped his fingers, comma, the skeletons began hammering at the energy shield. Suddenly, it went down without any warning. Hum, has it been five minutes already? Jay wondered, guessing that the power source, which was a soul stone, must have run out. Oh well, he shrugged, going over to loot Estoba before looting the throne. He decided to study the weird little shield projector later. Escoba's journal. Oh, another journal, wait, it doesn't crumble. Jay smiled, flipping through the pages. The writing was unidentifiable. It may have well been scribbled, comma, however, 
there were a few pictures. Jay only looked at a few strange contraptions before closing the book, comma, everything was faded, and the pages were delicate. So he decided to have a look through it later, when he got to a quieter place. Jay then went to see what he could look from the chair, comma, as he walked around the back of it. He had a sly smile on his face. Gripping his fingers around a larger crystal, it popped out with a click, though it had a strange, thick black wire attached easily ripped off. Greater soulstone, comma, empty, X1. Finally, a greater one. Jay shook his head with a sigh. I earned this. He looked around the room at all the carnage left behind, comma, yet. There wasn't much left as Jay had already added all the fallen skeletons to his gauntlet. Jay checked his quest. Hidden quest, comma, soul liberation. Gather soul stones and bring them to Sedulous. Progress. Soul stone. 364, slash 500. Large soul stone. 2, slash 2. Greater soul stone. 1, slash 3. Rewards. 3 skills. Mind, mark, host. Weapon. Sedulous's war spear. 2 left he smiled. Suddenly, the large glyph flickered behind J, the one which was giving light to the whole room. The familiar red wave of energy then traveled across it, seemingly consuming its raw power. Once again, Jay was in darkness. Chapter 133. Grujuo. Jay crouched down to keep his balance, as the whole pyramid started shaking. Stones, dust and pebbles fell from somewhere high above, creating loud cracking sounds as they exploded against the ground. Whatever was happening was big. Jay immediately pulled out his luminous orb, looking around for somewhere safe to go, out of the way of the falling rocks. He knew the exit had been blocked in the assistance room, so he didn't see the point in running towards it. It would just be a dead end after all, and there was no guarantee that it was safer than where he was right now. The only feature in this empty room was the throne Estoba sat in with the two pipes next to it. That may be the only safe spot here. Jay guessed, thinking the maker of the pyramid would have protected the throne. The pyramid groaned more loudly, and a light came from above Jay. A sliver of light turning into a long rectangle which was slowly getting wider. It was the sky, being revealed as the roof opened up. No way the whole pyramid is opening. Jay welcomed the dark gloomy sky with a whimsical smile. Despite it being overcast and dreary, it was truly refreshing to see after being in the pitch blackness of this dark, quiet pyramid. Well, mostly quiet anyway. G -r -r -r. Dune. With a final, deep booming noise the pyramid came to a stop. Finally Jay sighed, still looking up at the dark clouds as a light breeze flowed through the pyramid. He was thankful that no building-sized boulder came crashing down to crush him into a red paste. A gentle path downhill led from behind the throne, exiting out the back of the pyramid. In the distance was another black highway to the next pyramid. It seemed that this whole pyramid was split in half with the immense power from the glyph. Scree. On the hiss. I.e. Jay noticed some small escaping dehexapods, exiting from somewhere in the recesses of the freshly opened and cracked pyramid. Shit, Jay watched helplessly as the long leathery creatures sneaked through the ruins of the city and began their sneak attacks on Halvetian soldiers, devouring the soul stones with zero remorse. Was it by design that these were here? He couldn't be sure. Perhaps it was just another part of the dungeon, another twist to hinder his progress. What he could be sure about was that he would have to face them now too. Thankfully, it seemed that they were quite low level, as the soldiers they preyed upon were only swordsmen, while the dehexapods were only barely winning their fights. They were definitely not the level 133 nightmares Jay had previously encountered. Seems like we have an intense battle. Ahead Jay said to his three remaining skeletons. With a sigh, Jay finally went to the skull shield projector. Finally he could study it. He smiled, glad that it wasn't hit by a high speed falling pebble, and died comma it only had one HP after all. He crouched down on his knees. Looking closer as he tried to gain some understanding of it as he tried to figure out its parts. Unlike the turret, it had no moving parts, comma, it was quite literally a teepee of bones around a soul stone, with a skull on top. It's definitely not that simple, Jay thought as he inched closer. Hum Jay gazed into the skull's eyes. There were more smaller bones inside, so small that they seemed like hairs. They seemed to make the form of a tree within the skull. Looking at where the skull was connected to the teepee, he found that these branch-like bone structures came from under the skull. Going down through the teepee support, 
and touching the soul stone on the top. Okay, so it must be channeling the energy into the skull somehow. Jay made a mental note with a yawn. He was getting sleepy. That battle had taken much of his energy, not to mention that he had been here for hours. But the power source, what do I use? He looked at the soul stone, pursing his lips while thinking about what he could use to power its barrier. The only thing Jay had for a power source would be his sickly green necrotic mana. He put the shield on the ground, and traced his fingers across the glowing arteries on the shield comorates, the closest thing he could think of which used his mana like a power source. Maybe I can make something like my shield with necrotic mana arteries. Hum, I'll also need some kind of container for my mana to keep powering it. Soul stones are not an option, comma, I only have access to empty ones well. I have a single full one now, but then I would be back to square one. Some sort of bladder holding my mana is not an option, I can only manipulate bone. He scratched his chin as he tried to come up with solutions. Jay crouched and looked around the other side of it. Somehow it must use the energy of an escaping soul to power the shield dam. This is advanced he furrowed his brows, looking at the numerous tiny connections. Maybe I'll understand it one day. He shrugged, but not today. After gaining at least some understanding of the concept, all he could do now was try, persevering in experimentation until he got it right. Of course, this wasn't the time or place, and he wasn't in the right state of mind. With no more analysis to do, the only way to get any more knowledge about the skull now was to destroy it, and look at its parts. Gently placing his hand on the skull, he took out his trusty butcher knife, and lightly tapped it. One. Phew. Glad I kept this. Thankfully, he was gentle enough, and the TP structure didn't even collapse. Pulling the skull off, there was a strange structure underneath. It was like a honeycomb, having a hexagonal structure. Some tiny hair-like bones were snapped off as he lifted the skull up, breaking the connection between the skull and the hexagonal honeycomb structure. Jay shook his head, there's no way I can scrunch or something this technical, he thought, as he looked inside the skull. I'll definitely need to level that skill up. The honeycomb structure was filled with the many tiny hair-like bones. They were almost like hair but incredibly brittle. Holding the skull in his hand, he looked into the eyes more closely. It seems that the honeycomb structure is merely for support of the delicate bone hairs the hair-like bones pass through it, and connect to the inside of the skull. Interesting, he nodded. Finally, Jay cracked the skull open. He didn't see much else, comma, just the hair connecting to the inside of the skull. Hum, he set it aside, turning his attention to the teepee. The bone-like hairs wrapped around a hexagonal sphere sitting at the top of the teepee. While more hairs flowed out from the inside of the sphere, and went downwards to attach to the soul stone. Each face of the hexagons on the sphere was like an empty window going into the middle. It was more like a scaffolding, or a ball of chicken wire. Everything seems pretty straightforward, except for that strange angular sphere. Jay gently put his hand on it, while slowly cutting the hairs on the top and bottom sides. During the cutting process, he found that the hairs from the bottom attached to the inside of the sphere, while the hairs wrapping around the outside, all went upwards to the skull. Strange, I wonder if this is how the soul gets converted to energy. He guessed pulling little hairs off. Jay decided to put the hexagonal sphere in his inventory to study later, in case there was something he was missing. With another yawn, Jay knew it was time to leave, his body was begging him to go home and get into bed. He analyzed the bones of the teepee, but they didn't seem to be connected in any meaningful way, comma, they were merely support. Okay, time to head out, I think hopefully I'll teleport back here when I enter the dungeon tomorrow. Hum, I wonder if Anya will want to come fight some dehexapods. Jay willed to leave the dungeon, and as the exit sprung up next to him, he sent his skeletons out on a killing mission for soul stones, comma, as well as to gather any Holvetian rings. He would definitely not let them forget to loot the Holvetian rings again. Unfortunately, he still didn't have enough mana to summon the fourth one, but he didn't really care. He was too tired to wait around anyway. I'll have to study Estoba's journal tomorrow and practice my scrimshaw skill. I definitely have enough bone to practice crafting with. He thought as he stepped through the exit portal with a proud smile. Chapter 134 2000X Huh, where did that extra X come from? Jay had a confused smile as he stepped out of the dungeon. Oh yeah, the Helminth I guess X doesn't transfer through two dungeons. He shrugged, glad the parasitic worm was still at work in the other dungeon. 
He made a mental note to visit it tomorrow and collect some new blue bones. I guess Anya went home. Jay looked around the exit area, looking for her. It seemed that the other adventurers did too. Well, I'll see her tomorrow. He shrugged, not forgetting about the ring she still has for him. While walking home, Jay began thinking about the last fight, analyzing it. Hum, things would have been bad if I couldn't keep summoning skeletons. If I run out of mana, it seems that I am as good as dead, comma, even if I do have high strength. It wouldn't really matter Jay was beginning to rethink everything once more, as he was shaking his head. It's way too convenient to summon a skeleton, way more so than having a few extra damage with a slow nod, he realized that he didn't really even need strength. Hum, another mistake. At least I only put 5 points into strength. Jay checked his strength, sitting on 20, he was regretful, but glad he learned his lesson this early. That's right, I'm a necromancer. Why should I have to fight? It's below me. A proud smile began to form on his face. My strength is good enough to defend myself anyway from now on. All attribute points will go into energy. I won't even need to worry about fighting if I can keep getting another skeleton to spring up. They will take damage for me, and they will swing their weapons in my stead. They will be as endless as my mana pool. And my bone collection Jay gazed at his gauntlet containing approximately 670,000 skeletons. And I definitely won't run out of skeletons. He chuckled with a skip in his step, finally making it to the north bridge of Losler. 75 x 75. Jay raised a brow, wondering what that came from. The statues were worth either 35 and 40 or 90 and 100 x for the sword and spear variants respectively. The silt walls were worth 200 x so it couldn't have been them either. That's when Jay remembered the dehexapids he set loose in the dungeon. Hum, perhaps they killed one of those experiments he guessed, realizing now that they must definitely be lower level if three skeletons could take one down. Jay arrived at his butchery, Trenley had already cleaned up and went home. So Jay promptly went to freshen up before sleeping. Big day tomorrow he thought as he got into bed, going to try to copy my helmet spell, collect the blue bones, visit Villada, get the rings off on ya and craft so much shit he looked at his gauntlet, thinking about all the bones it contained before trying to get comfortable. Damn it, he shifted uncomfortably. The gauntlet was kind of hard to sleep with on his hand. Losler Adventurer Association. The guards of Losler had all been into the dungeons here at least once. Some were not from Losler, and had leveled up in other parts of the country, so many didn't have too much experience with these local low-level dungeons. They would primarily enter them for the adventure or out of boredom, but this was a rare occurrence. Losler was not a high-level area after all, comma, why would they go into a low-level dungeon without much to gain? Anya was sitting across from an adventurer association guard as she had dinner, discussing her latest adventure. What do you mean under the third pyramid? You do some digging or something? One of the association guards asked Anya as he chewed on some steak. Ah, you know how you go down the left passage and... Oh yeah, there's that door you can't get through. What, can't get through? She tilted her head to the side. Yeah, you know, that door with the magical bar. Even with my high level strength I couldn't lift it he shrugged I guess it's not meant to be opened. Anya sat quietly and sipped her drink, not wanting to raise suspicion, as she was about to give something away. So how do you conquer that pyramid? Anya said as she put her drink down. Well, long story short comma you can't. If it lets you conquer it, we would be able to teleport back to it when entering the dungeon he ate a roasted vegetable off his plate. Did you make it to the boss yet? You want some tips? He raised a brow. Hum Anya usually liked to figure things out on her own, but this time, she made a concession comma she hoped to be more helpful to Jay. Sure. She nodded, eating some more. Well, there's this monster up there with a single offspring comma all you have to do is kill the smaller one and the large one will die. Their soul linked or something so it's really easy he shrugged. Oh thanks she smiled. Did you have to fight any of the giant stalus by any chance? The six guards at the entrance. Yeah, of course. No, I mean the giant statues she pointed upwards the ones taller than trees. He raised a brow, confused. Oh, you mean the stalu stalus. They are actually just statues. He chuckled, just statues. They're not gonna do anything. Anya pursed her lips in thought. Okay, I see. So you can't get through the door in the passage, and the giant stalus don't move. 
Ah, uh, yeah. He seemed to go deeper into thought as he stared at his food for a moment. Anya smiled and got up after it seemed like he was thinking about it too much. She didn't want him getting suspicious or anything. Thanks for the tips. Kill the small one right. She smiled. Hum. Oh, yeah, the small one. You're welcome. He went back to eating his dinner. Anya promptly took her plate to the dish area and went upstairs to her room. So somehow we got into that room because of Jay and his skeletons. The door must not let humans enter or at least the living. She sighed, even the dungeons treat him differently. It seems she shook her head. Anya was beyond disbelief at this point, comma, when it came to Jay. It would be unusual if something weird didn't happen. All she could think was of course and accept whatever happened next. I'll have to find him tomorrow. Nice and early she nodded as she closed the door to her room, before getting ready for bed. Somewhere south of Losla, deep in the forest, Lara and Lannister had made a small camp in between some large boulders hidden away in the forest as enemies of the mage hunters they had to be extra careful. And since they arrived here, they had been scouting and analyzing Losla. Nothing out of the ordinary Lara reported after getting back from a nighttime patrol. There seems to be more guard patrols near the south side, but other than that common nothing. She shrugged. Good. We'll contact Sullivan tomorrow and hopefully meet the new recruits. Lannister said, stoking the small campfire once more. They had made their camp in the midst a small rocky outcrop, hidden deep within the forest. They were far from the patrol range of the Losler guards, comma, even hunters wouldn't come this far south. They were completely safe, comma, perhaps even too safe. Of course, they had to be this safe, comma, getting caught by the mage hunters wouldn't mean death. It would mean an endless torture using vile magics to extract every piece of information from their minds. Lannister expected Lara to sit down by the fire, but she began to leave the campsite again. Wait, where are you going? Lannister stared at her. I found a bandit camp. I think the bandits all died though because it doesn't look abandoned. It was like they all just got up and left a few weeks ago. Lannister smiled, regretting that he had to bring her along. Apparently she was here for his protection. So you're going to loot it while we're on mission. Hey, what I do in my spare time is my business. I'll be back later. She said precisely, not letting him argue. Fine, he shook his head, just don't stay out too long. There's work to do tomorrow. Work, work, she said with a cheeky smile, hopping on a large rock as it began to levitate, and soon was speeding off across the tree line of the forest, skimming past treetops as she passed by. MMM she closed her eyes and smiled as she embraced the cool air flowing over her face. Somehow the air feels fresher in the real world. She peacefully flew over the forest under the moonlight. Chapter 135 Jay woke up to some chopping noises, coming from downstairs, comma, clearly he overslept, since Trenley was already here preparing for the day. 2900x. Hey, good. Jay smiled as he woke up, pleased to see that both his skeletons and employee were hard at work, even while he was sleeping. After freshening up, he made his way downstairs. Morning, Jay, Trenley nodded, still hard at work. He seemed as focused as ever, and Jay could tell he was putting his entire focus into the job. It seemed like his discipline for training as an adventurer and hunting were transferring to other parts of his life. Morning Jay began cooking his breakfast while letting Trenley work. How's business? Are you getting the hang of it? Yes. Meat has also been easier to purchase lately. I think the forest is recovering from whatever happened. Trenley said as he cleaved some flesh. Oh, good Jay scratched his eyebrow hiding his face. Got any gold for me? He sat down and began eating his breakfast. Oh, yeah. 50% right. Trenley checked his inventory. Yeah, the profit after buying the meat and things, not the actual revenue. Here you are. Trenley pulled the gold from his inventory. 130 gold. Thanks Jay smiled. It was a little less than expected, but Trenley was still newcomer besides. The butchery had been closed for a while so customers were bound to be lower than usual. Hum, I wonder if I should buy something new with this hum. Maybe I'll just wait and see how my bone crafting does today. Jay thought as he cleaned his plate before heading back upstairs. Trenly, I'll be busy upstairs, don't let anyone come up. Jay looked him in the eye, adding a little more weight to his words. Do not disturb, sure. Trenly stopped chopping for a moment and nodded. 
As soon as Jay got into his room he closed the door and braced it with a chair. Next, a cloud of the dark green mana appeared before disappearing again, comma, a pile of bones being revealed in its place. Now I need to level my Scrinshaw up. Jay thought as he sat on his bed, looking at the bone pile. It would be a waste to just create multiple copies of the same thing. I should at least try to make some useful stuff. He nodded, a thought drifted across his mind. They have weapons for offense, they would need defense too. Skeleton armor. He wondered, can they even wear armor? The first thing Jay did was summon one of his skeletons. It tapped about on his floorboards before he ordered it to stand still. There were only three skeletons left alive in the dungeon last night. So this didn't hurt any of their progress. The question was which skeleton was this one? Thankfully, now that it was level 3, it has its name against its level comma it was Sweeper. Jay pursed his lips, of course it's fucking Sweeper. He shook his head. Alright, let's get on with it. Jay shook his head more as he went over to his skeleton. Hum, I need to make something simple that can easily attach to your body. A necrotic breastplate was currently a bit too beyond Jay's level. There was simply too much material to focus on, so he had to craft something smaller. As Jay looked over the features of his skeleton, he found that there were some gaps in its forearm and lower legs. Unlike some of the animals Jay had butchered, humans have two bones between the elbow and the wrist with a gap between them. Hum he held Sweeper's arm out. I can totally exploit this gap to attach armor to. A smile began to appear on his face. So it seems like I'll be creating Vambrises and Greaves first. Jay immediately got to work, he grabbed a small amount of bones from the pile, and began to channel his necrotic mana into it. The bones all responded in kind, levitating and turning into lightly glowing, viscous blobs. In the quiet of Jay's room under the sunlight coming from the window, Jay noticed something new. Huh, there's a kind of dust coming out. He squinted at it. It just occurred to Jay that there were impurities in the bones, comma, he simply didn't see it before, since he was either in a dark labyrinth or an overcast sky. The only solution Jay thought of to bring out more of these impurities was to add more heat, or in this case, more necrotic mana. Jay happily indulged the process as he forced more mana into it, separating the particles of bone from one another. Slowly the blob of viscous, sticky bones became more fluid-like, while letting out a stronger glow. Containing this water-like orb took more concentration from Jay, along with more of his mana. Initially, Jay was only using about 0.1 mana per second, barely noticeable, comma, now it was all the way up to 0.5 mana per second. Thankfully, as the fluid bones swelled, less and less impurities were falling out. After burning through 25 mana, Jay decided it was enough. He began extracting his necrotic mana out of the bones, which served to slowly turn it solid again. It was at this point in the process where Jay realized he should stockpile these pure bones, before using them for crafting. He didn't just want a weird hard ball of bone, so before it solidified too much he formed it into a rectangular bar, similar to a blacksmith's ingot. Just like that, he had used half of his mana. It was a taxing process. Damn he rubbed his temples to soothe his mind while chewing on some bentussel root. Mana regen buff 1% comma lasts for 1 hour comma s. Slowly, a very light grey ingot floated down before him. Unlike other bones, there were no stains of red, yellow or black spots in them. The colour was uniform. In Jay's eyes, they were perfect comma of course, a notification revealed it not to be. Arsane ingot comma 96% purity x1. Damn, these are way too good to craft with he thought as he looked at the glossy sheen. They seem to be quite high quality. I think I'll hold on to these until I learn how to craft better. He thought before storing it away. It would be wasteful to give high quality materials to a novice crafter after all. Okay, now to craft some armor. He looked at his skeleton once more before proceeding. Jay repeated the process, sending his mana into bones to make a viscous blob, before forming a hollow cylinder shape. Next, he removed some mana to harden it slightly, while forcing the material to form a thick trim around the edges for durability, as well as making a bar going through the center. The difference between this and a normal Vambrus was that it had a bar going through the middle which would slot between the skeleton's arm bones comma radius and armor, ensuring they wouldn't come off. It wasn't needed, but Jay didn't trust his skeletons not to lose them. 
After molding it into its form he slowly pulled his mana out of it, solidifying it more. Finally, he had a finished product. Spectral Vambrus. Common. 5 armor. 5 health when equipped by undead. Oh, a bonus for undead. I guess it's because I specifically made it for them. Cool. He nodded. Sweeper gazed at the gauntlet curiously as it stood there silently. Jay wanted to see what the skeleton would do if given armor comma would it even understand what it was. Here you go Sweeper Jay casually tossed it to the skeleton. Immediately the skeleton snatched it out of the air and equipped it on its arm. I guess it understands Jay chuckled. Well, I'll make seven more of these and then eight greaves. Jay nodded as he got into crafting mode. With a keen focus Jay got to work. Steadily making them comma as he went, he finally leveled up his Scrimshaw skill. Ability level up. Scrimshaw level 3. Can use bone to create basic objects. Well, that's a nice surprise. Jay smiled while reading over the level up notification. Huh, I think the description is the same. I guess these are considered basic. He pursed his lips so well. My crafting skill is only level 3 anyway. I wonder if those skull shield projectors are considered intermediate. He looked up and thought, I guess I'll just have to find out. It turns out that after crafting all the swords, hammers and his shield, that he was incredibly close to leveling up his scrimshaw to 3 comma achieving it, before he even started crafting the 8 greaves. Two more vambruses and 8 greaves later, he was finally done making some armor for his skeletons. The greaves had slightly better stats than the vambruses, as he crafted them while being level 3. Spectral Greave, common. 6 armor, 5 health when equipped by undead. Jay decided he wouldn't bother remaking the Vambruses for one extra armor, it simply wasn't worth it. He would wait till he got better at crafting, or until they needed replacing. Two of the Vambruses had the extra armor point, but Jay decided to save those for Blue, his favorite skeleton. The plan next was to try and craft some armor for himself, comma, then extra armor pieces for the skeletons. However, he was rudely interrupted. Knock, knock, knock. Suddenly, a knock came from the door. Damn, what the hell? I told Trenly to not let anyone up. Jay furrowed his brow in frustration, immediately unsummoning Sweeper and storing it in his ring along with the bone pile. Then finally storing away the armor pieces. Knock, knock. Just a sec. Spectral Vambrus X6. Spectral Grieve X6. Next, he silently took away the chair before opening the door. Chapter 136. Jay opened the door, the hint of a scowl on his face as he was interrupted from crafting, right in the middle of something. Anya. Hi, Villada wanted me to remind you to visit him today, and I owe you these rings, so I thought I'd bring them over. She shrugged, holding out the rings. With a sigh, Jay took them. Helvetian Ring X14. Thanks he looked down the stairs to see Trenly standing there with a light frown. Trenly let you up. Well I said it would be okay and rushed up here. Before he could stop me. She shrugged with a smile. Jay shook his head. It's alright Trenly. Trenly nodded and went back to work. Well, if that's all, I have some stuff to do. Jay gestured down the stairs. Of course, Anya had an ulterior motive to coming here. Ah. Oh, I was wondering if you were planning on going back into Mistkeep. I have some useful tips for the third pyramid. She smiled. Oh, well yeah comma but later today also. I already conquered the third pyramid. So that's okay. You can help with the fourth if you'd like. He shrugged. You conquered it Anya raised her voice. Before glancing down the stairs and lowering it again. So you beat the two creatures alone. Yeah. And then the room after that too. The room after. What? There's a room after. Jay shook his head. Anya was wasting his time with silly questions. He wasn't going to repeat himself. You'll see. He said with a sigh. I'll come to the association when I'm ready okay. Maybe in an hour or so. Mm. Thanks Anya looked down the stairs before turning back. What are you doing now? She smiled. Jay squinted at her. Checking the stairs himself before whispering. You know how I was making that dagger. That time you startled the shit out of me when I thought you were unconscious in Carter's demise. Yeah, she smiled slyly. Well, now I'm making armor, and here you are interrupting me again. Jay shook his head with a smile. Oh, sorry she shrugged. It wasn't really something that interested her. In that case, I'm going to go kill some mobs. I'll head over to the guild in an hour and wait for you. 
Sounds good, see you then. Jay said, watching her leave before closing the door. With a sigh, he propped up the chair again. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah, armor for myself. Jay took out some bones and began to channel his mana into them once more. He crafted himself some vambrises and greaves similar to the skeleton's comma except, without the bar going through the middle. Necrotic vambris. Common. Six armor. Nice. He smiled, analyzing one of his finished products. Huh. It's called necrotic instead of spectral. I guess it's since I made it for a human. He thought, looking at them. Too bad there's no health bonus comma but it's better than nothing. He shrugged before finally trying them on. They were a snug fit around his molotus coat. But that was not necessarily a bad thing. It would be better in battle. So that they wouldn't slip comma though Jay did encounter one problem. Oh, my gauntlet part of the gauntlet had excess armor traveling partly up Jay's arm, stopping the Vambrus from fitting on it. Damn, oh well. He stored the second Vambrus into his inventory. It would be a backup, just in case. It's nice that the armor doesn't need mana to maintain its form. I wonder why it's different. Jay thought for a moment, perhaps weapons simply need more maintenance. He scratched his chin. Unlike the armor, all the weapons he had made so far, including his shield, had a lifespan passive ability, which made them require necromancer mana to maintain their form. Hum, what else can I make? Jay thought about the armor that the Helvetian statues wore for inspiration, and in an instant he had an idea. It was immediately clear that a helmet was a most crucial part of the armor comer it would be what Jay targeted first during a fight after all. Jay decided to create one similar to those T-Visor helmets that the statues wore. Immediately, he got to work forming another green blob of glowing bones. Next he decided to form half a sphere, forming it into a bowl shape. After that, he elongated two parts of it downwards, which would eventually be the cheek plates. Jay decided to solidify the shape he had made before continuing the crafting process, as he had an idea while forming a comma perhaps coming from his level 3 insight. The idea was to target a specific part to mold while stopping his mana from traveling through the rest of it. This meant he would only need to focus on a single part. After the pseudo helmet was set into its shape, Jay began to funnel mana into it again comma but he kept it localized to a certain part, making a T shape with his mana. The T part of the visor was now liquid and Jay forced it to each side, which created the T-shaped gap. As the molten bone was pushed to each side, it effectively reinforced the edges of the T visor with a slightly thicker rim. It was a pretty simple design, but it was the best Jay could do for now. Happy with how it was looking, he let it solidify. Necrotic Barbute Helmet. Common. Nine armor. Hum Jay looked at his new armor. Happy with the bigger armor bonus comma compared to his Vambrises and Greaves anyway. The final step was to try it on. Awesome, perfect fit he smiled. Glad that he wouldn't have to make another. Before making some helmets for his skeletons too, he decided to see what else he could make. Pauldrons, which were like shoulder armor, would not work because they would have to be strapped on with some sort of leather bindings comma and that would require latches to be made into them, which Jay wasn't confident with yet. Still. He decided to have a go anyway. The basic cup shape of the shoulder armor was made comma next. He made a long strand of bone and attached it at two points. For whatever reason, it simply wouldn't attach. Jay tried adding more mana to the pauldron and the strand to make them more liquid-like and mix. But then some of the strand became so skinny that it would have snapped. Damn, it's simply beyond my level right now. Jay lightly frowned. Oh well, I'll get there he encouraged himself. Jay summoned Sweeper once again, comma, he needed a head to test a skeletal helmet on after all. Immediately he got to work, crafting a slightly smaller helmet. The first turned out to be a little too small, and nearly got stuck on Sweeper's head, while it was half on. Thankfully, the second one fit perfectly. Next, Jay crafted three more of the T-Visor helmets for his skeletons. Even though he made them slightly smaller to fit their fleshless skulls. They still ended up having the necrotic prefix in their names comma same as J's. I guess it's since they weren't specifically made for the undead. He shrugged. Oh well, I think that's enough crafting for now. My mana is pretty low. J ate another bentussle root refreshing his mana regen buff to one hour. Before collecting all his bones and armor pieces. Walking to the door of his room. He took out a Stober's journal and gazed at it for a moment. Hum, later I'm too busy today. Jay stashed the book away as fast as he took it out. 
Now, time to see how many bones my helminth has for me he turned to de-summon Sweeper again, but paused. This was when Jay noticed something different about Sweeper. For some reason it caused a shiver to go up Jay's spine. You're still wearing the Greaves and Vambrises even after I resummoned you. Chapter 137 You're still wearing the Greaves and Vambrises even after I resummoned you. Jay glared at Sweeper with his eyes bulging. He was simply too intrigued to leave his room now. Immediately he desummoned Sweeper. Its skeletal body collapsed with a clink on Jay's wooden floor. Jay got on his hands and knees, digging through the bone pile. He was looking over the bones with expectation, but he didn't find any of the armor he made for it. So where the hell did it go? He furrowed his brow in confusion as he resummoned the skeleton again. There it was again, comma, all the armor Jay made for it, including its new helmet too. Give me your helmet, Jay commanded, holding out his hand. Of course, Sweeper dropped it on the floor. Jay shook his head and de-summoned Sweeper once more, ignoring the helmet on the ground. Even though Sweeper was summoned, the helmet was still there. Jay re-summoned Sweeper again. This time, it came back with all its other armor except the helmet. So, is the armor being stored somewhere or turning back to bones? It was Jay's last test comma but he was low on mana, too low to summon Sweeper again. Of course, Jay didn't want to wait to find out tonight or tomorrow, and with a sigh, he put all his other plans on hold, and sat cross-legged on his bed, beginning to meditate. It was a skill he had not used for a while, not since he was in the Stink Rat Marsh dungeon, but as he started, it was like muscle memory. Once again, he felt energized as the ambient mana flowed into his body. MP 7 slash 68 MP colon 12 slash 68 MP 17 slash 68 Jay took a break checking his mana gains. Wow, 5 every 10 minutes. Looks like I'm much faster now too he smiled. Last time it was only 3 every 10 minutes. Since Jay was now level 10, had practiced with Villada, and had gained a better feel for ambient mana, it was flowing into his body more freely. He could easily pull it in and make it his own. Jay kept going until he had 30 mana, which would be enough to raise his level 3 skeleton twice. He only planned to raise it once more though, as the second time would be for an emergency. It didn't hurt to be cautious. Okay, let's see Jay unsummon Sweeper, and it clinked onto the floor once more. Next, he pulled out some of the bones from its corpse, comma, he guessed the approximate amount of what he used to craft the armor, and pulled them out. Okay, here it goes. Jay held his hand out as his necrotic, sickly green, glowing mana, made the bones float and clink around once more. Before his eyes, Sweeper formed once more with its glowing green eyes staring back at him. Jay immediately looked over its arms and legs, comma, no armor. Huh, Jay pursed his lips for a moment. Jay suddenly thought of another test, comma, could Sweeper remake the armor using its bone eater skill? Well, sorry to keep you waiting on ya. But this is more important to me he thought with a shrug. Jay really didn't need her, she was just a helpful benefit to clearing dungeons in his eyes. Pulling out some bones from his gauntlet, he waved them at Sweeper. Here you go, you hungry boy. Jay treated Sweeper like a dog. Unfortunately, it didn't respond. Huh, I guess not. Jay clicked his fingers and unsummoned it once more. Okay, final test comma will the armor come back. Since he removed the bones, the armor didn't return, comma, would adding more somehow bring the armor back. Jay took out some completely different bones from his gauntlet, adding them to the skeleton pile, comma, in fact, he went the extra mile, and added enough bones to make a pile up to his hip. Trenly looked up as he heard all the strange noises coming from upstairs. It sounded like Jay was throwing handfuls of rocks around the room like a psychopath. After making a concerned look for a moment, he shrugged and got back to work. It wasn't his business after all. Arise, Jay said as he summoned Sweeper once more. A grin appeared on Jay's face as it sprung up back to life. No fucking way he shook his head with a bright smile. The armor had reappeared. Jay gave Sweeper its helmet back now too. He was finally smiling with pride at Sweeper. After all the unsummoning and resummoning, he ended up with only one reasonable conclusion. While the armor is on them, it effectively becomes a part of them. That must be why it can be resummoned with the armor. If there's enough bone mass comma and also why it gives them health. He nodded. Slowly Jay began to realize what this means. I only need to make armor for them once, and they'll have it forever. He smiled. If they fall in battle, 
I can just resummon them, and they'll come back with full armor he began chuckling. Hum. But what if the armor breaks? He looked up and thought. Well, I will just have to test it. Hopefully it comes back when I resummon them, similar to how their bodies come back fully repaired every time. It's a shame that the Bone Eater skill doesn't work to recover the armor though. Well, technically it didn't have any armor to fix, since I took it off it. I wonder, comma, if the armor is broken, will Bone Eater allow repairs? It won't allow armor creation, obviously, but repairs. Jay gazed at his skeleton, comma, it was still watching him as it waited for orders. Jay stared back at it for a minute before sighing. I can't wait to test it, he mischievously smiled, tempted to attack his skeleton. Before deciding against it, comma, it would be a waste of time. Jay held out his gauntlet, unsummoned sweeper, and collected the small mountain of bones before sitting on his bed again. He meditated on the bed once more, bringing his mana up to his preferred minimum of 14. Nearly two hours had passed since Anya left, so Jay decided to simply head to the guild. He decided to pick Anya up and then check on his helmet. Jay could have easily just checked on the helmet before going to meet her, but he figured Anya would rather come than sit around the guild. Chapter 138 275 X Jay opened another notification as he casually strolled to the Adventurer Association. It was a pleasant, sunny morning outside, so Jay was simply taking in the view. As he began walking up the hill, the coldness of winter had mostly gone, and it seemed like the forest was coming back to life again, as it woke up from its winter slumber. Not many days left to hunt those glade deer he thought as he gazed at the evergreens. Well, unless you're me anyway, he grinned. The glade deers which had infrared vision, would not be able to see his skeletons coming. Since they didn't give off any body heat, comma, in fact, most of the forest creatures never saw Jay's skeletons coming, only realizing they were there after a skeletal knife hand was already implanted into their throats with precision. This rogue medical operation was a success nearly every time. Most of the time, they couldn't even warn other animals, as the only sounds they made were covered up by a gargling red froth. Jay's face turned sour as he soon came to a stop at the edge of the road, noticing the place where he slid down the side of the hill on that fateful day, comma, and then remembering everything that went along with it. Bastard little smirking prick he thought as he remembered when Matheson passed by in the carriage. Jay was still wanting revenge. The anger had died down a little in Jay's heart by now, so he couldn't be bothered to go out and actually seek revenge, comma, but he would probably still take it. If given the opportunity, unfortunately, the more he thought about it, the more he wanted it. The thought of revenge was like a fire being kindled. It would only want more and more fuel, as it blazed wildly, comma, eventually consuming its maker. Jay had a bitter expression as he continued walking, and for quite some time too, it was like the pleasant, sunny day around him no longer existed. Thankfully it passed, and soon enough he snapped out of it. At least I have started to enjoy dungeons they couldn't take that from me. He nodded with a small half smile. And I'm basically the strongest novice adventurer in Losler. Maybe I should be thanking the smug prick he chuckled. Jay entered the floating mana stone gate with a gentle smile. Satisfied with how far he had come as he looked for Anya. Of course, other adventurers immediately started chatting as soon as they saw the local celebrity. Hey, it's him. Looks like he slept in. One adventurer said off to the side. Nah, he probably just got back from a dungeon. Most people his level start slaying before the sun even comes up. Yikes, I barely even get up before lunchtime. Here he shrugged. Jay ignored their chatter as he went past, heading towards the association, comma, though he didn't walk too far before he noticed Anya shooting targets at the archery range. Jay had a sly smile as he tried to sneak up on her. Other adventurers' eyes bulged as they saw this comma who tries to sneak up on the guildmaster's daughter. Many gave disapproving looks as they watched him, shaking their fingers and their heads, comma, but none said anything. Jay was getting closer and closer, taking a deep breath as he prepared to screech at her, comma, similar to how the dehexapod squealed. Closer, closer, Jay thought, his mischievous smile getting bigger and bigger, until finally he was ready to pounce. Hi Jay, Anya said casually. She didn't even turn around as she released another bolt, hitting a moving target like it was nothing. Jay immediately stopped crouching, and scratched his head with a slight daze of wonder. Hi, ready to go. Anya turned to Jay with a knowing smile, and was now reloading her crossbow. Aren't you gonna talk to Villada? 
She put a bolt in before picking up her crossbow. Oh yeah, uh, just give me a sec. He didn't say it was training, so it will probably be quick. He shrugged. Jay quickly headed into the association and greeted Margaret with a smile. Good morning, he smiled. Morning, dear. How can I help? She returned his smile. Villada wanted to see me. Sure, take a seat, honey. She went into the room behind her with a wave. Thanks. It didn't take long till she came back out again. He won't be long dash she looked down the hallway as she heard some steps. Oh, here he is now. That was quick she glanced at Villada as he arrived. Oh, yes. Villada shrugged. Good morning, Jay. Come with me. Sure, and good morning. Jay hopped up. Villada quickly led Jay to his office, opening the door for him with a smile, as he quickly ushered him in. It seemed that he was in a hurry. Please, take a seat he pointed to an empty seat in front of his desk. Jay nodded and sat down. Villada seems to really be in a rush today he thought, trying to hide his concern with a good enough poker face. Villada darted around Jay and sat behind his desk, opening his drawer and staring at something for a moment before closing it again. So, Jay, I have some good news, comma, great news even. An opportunity he grinned with the toothy smile of an old wizard. Oh, Jay tilted his head. I have decided to take you under my wing as my star pupil. Isn't that great? I've arranged a room for you here at the guild, and I'll be able to give you lessons whenever you would like them. He smiled as he put his elbows on his desk and interlaced his fingers. Oh, Jay was still wearing his poker face, not showing any emotion at all. Villada lightly exhaled, wondering why Jay wasn't praising his name right now. Jay really didn't react how Villada thought he would. Well, I guess staying here won't be so bad. Is the room free? Jay questioned. Villada had to stop his eyes from bulging at Jay. Why wasn't Jay jumping at the opportunity? Many would perhaps even kill for this. It's 30 gold per night. Villada said as his fingers seemed to tighten on his hands. Ah, well Jay leaned back in the chair, it's too bad he pursed his lips. Jay really was going to reject the offer, comma, why would he stay there when he could sleep at home for free? Villada quickly added as a cold sweat came across him, but, but for you it's free, obviously. He laughed, comma, perhaps a little too loudly. Hum, well okay then, but don't force me to have lessons. I have lots of things to do. Jay shrugged. What the fuck what the absolute fuck Villada thought but continued to smile. Jay was the first adventurer to treat Villada like a disposable object. He didn't know how to feel. After a slight pause, Villada was ready to speak again. Sure, he said with a shit-eating grin. Just speak to Margaret, and she'll bring you to your room. Awesome. Thanks. Jay got up with a smile. Getting to dungeons near here will be way quicker now. You're not supposed to. Never mind. Villada shook his head, welcome. He nodded while pursing his lips, and politely gestured for Jay to leave. Villada was oddly clenching his jaw, but Jay didn't put too much thought into it as he left. What the fuck I wonder if he was hit on the head as a child. Damn it now I have to pay for two rooms. Villada wore a defeated smile across his face as he opened his drawer once more, staring at his growing black cube. Chapter 139 Jay left the room feeling strange. For some reason he felt like he was being taken advantage of, even though logically, on paper, he had won out. Weird old man that seemed a little forced he thought as he began walking back to Margaret. I should definitely check my room for hidden magic moving image recorders. I'm not saying Villada is that kinder man, but just in case. Jay could only guess at what Villada's strange over-enthusiasm was about. From Jay's perspective, Villada didn't even seem to care that he may not attend lessons, but was oddly passionate about him staying there. It didn't really make sense. Margaret came out of the back room with a key for Jay. Here you go dear, you're actually going to be in the room next to Neria. Oh, well, don't tell her. We'll let it be a surprise. Jay smiled, though his thoughts were different. Damn, I don't want some little girl distracting me. At least she doesn't talk. He thought as he turned to the exit. Well, I'll see you later, Margaret. If there's any trouble, I'll let you know. Bye now. Heading out of the association, Anya was now standing near some other ranged base adventurers, giving tips and feedback to them as they attacked, while judging their weapons too. As Jay stepped out of the building, Anya looked up, waving bye to the others and joining Jay's side. Ho! Jay nodded as he kept walking towards the floating mana stone gate. Hi! So, you defeated the third pyramid, huh? Yep. Jay shrugged. Okay. 
We'll see. She nodded as if she knew something. You don't believe me. It's not that. I just think you might be mistaken. Oh, yeah. She shrugged, not giving away any more. Okay, then keep your secrets, he shrugged. She's acting weird, Jay thought, but decided not to say anything. As they passed through the minor stone gate, Jay continued walking down the normal path towards Losler. Hey, aren't we going to the Miss Keep? Yeah, I just have to stop off at another dungeon first. Oh, you've been doing other dungeons. Which ones? Leaf Cliff, Howling Stand, Varine Sisters. No, I only do instance dungeons, you know why. It's the Wolf Quarry Dungeon. Though, that's a bit risky alone, comma, but I suppose someone like you would be fine. She shrugged and glanced at Jay, hinting that he would never be alone because of all his skeletons. Jay looked back with a serious gaze, not smiling, not showing any emotion at all. We're alone on the path, but she should probably keep her mouth shut. He thought as he tried to stop the conversation continuing by being silent. Thankfully, it seemed like she got the message as she quieted down. Jay and Anya shortly arrived at the Wolf Quarry Dungeon. Wait here a moment, Jay said before diving into the black hole, the dungeon entrance. As he floated to the ground in the dark pit, he nearly stumbled as he landed on a pile of bones. Looks like it has had no problems killing the wolves he stepped off the pile of bones. Huh, it seems the helminth can extract bones too. He looked around, noting the lack of flesh, and viscera comma this was until the helminth raised its skull from out of the ground, bits of the silt wolf flesh lodged in its skull. Well, hello there, Jay smiled, but not patting it. Snap snap. The helminth snapped its jaw twice. It seemed to be like its greeting. Did you do this? Jay pointed at the bones. Snap snap. Good job. Aren't you a good little parasite? He smiled, praising the undead creature. Snap snap. It then happily dived back underground. Using his necrotic sense, Jay felt it slithering away under the ground, heading back to collect more bones. Looking around, Jay guessed there were about 20 corpses of the wolves. It was hard to tell how many wolves were slain, as there were no skulls. They were simply too big for the little parasitic helminth to store inside itself. But the individual bones were fair game. Don't mind if I do. Jay slyly smiled, scooping all the bones into his ring with a single wave of his gauntlet. Evulin City. A small crowd began to gather at the central square of the city. Looks of fear, excitement and hope were across the faces of the people that had gathered. None of them knew why such a large force of mage hunters was here, and it meant that both danger was coming while safety had arrived. What the hell are the mage hunters doing here? A hide merchant whispered to Bertram. HMMH. Bertram gave nothing but a grunt, deciding not to say anything. He knew better than to trust an authority which promised safety in exchange for power, comma, though. He still had to keep up appearances. With a bitter taste in his mouth, he took out tiny black signs and put them in front of the various stalls he owned. 50% off to our valiant heroes. Hopefully they don't see my signs he thought as he strategically placed them around, nearly out of view, comma, just not enough to raise suspicion. To Bertram's delight, it seemed that the mage hunters were just passing through, as none of them went to any inns or set up any shelters. They were simply resting here for a moment before moving on. A sub-commander of the mage hunters was looking over a detailed map of the region. We're getting closer to the wilds. Only a few more noteworthy villages left. He looked over the map while another sub-commander watched. Send a platoon to Tolgard, then send one squad to Losler. The other commander nodded, accepting his orders with a salute. Before marching off to find one of his platoon leaders, comma, Lieutenant Marsh. After spending a few hours resting, the mage hunters were already on the march again. The large group of armor-clad troops broke off into smaller ones, as they each left in different directions from the city, while only a few squads remained behind to protect Evelyn. Lieutenant Marsh is known as the Inquisitor among Division 4. He is not just a competitive man, but has an over-scrupulous attention to detail. One that would put an archaeologist to shame comma this quality, would only be matched by his hunger for battle. He deserved his platoon leader command position over the four squads under him, comma, but it wasn't enough for him. He desired to fight. Each of his heavy steps was placed with purpose. He may be marching quietly behind his troops, but on the inside he is like a hungry wolf. After idly training in the castle and its nearby dungeons for so long, he was finally being deployed again. His blood was quietly roiling under his skin as he looked forward to his next battle. 
The dungeon monsters were not exciting enough for him. They didn't satiate his desire for intense battle. Most of them simply weren't complex or cunning enough. After discovering a way to defeat them, the excitement of battle would be over, and sadly, the monsters would never adapt. Why can't there be a peasant uprising he sometimes sadistically thought. Thanks to all the mana conduits, people rarely got powerful or dangerous classes anymore. In recent decades, the safety beerus were turning into a smaller force. It was getting rarer and rarer to see them in public anymore. They may have been like a shell of their former selves, but at the same time had become a more elite force. Chapter 140, Drew. A loud war horn resounded from the Adventurer Association, echoing through all of Losla from the hill. Jay and Anya were already close to the Miskeep dungeon entrance when they heard it, but it caused them to stop in their steps, cancelling their plans. What's the horn about? Jay casually asked, assuming it was some kind of drill. I don't know, but we should go to the guild. Anya said with a worried look. Hum, alright, I just need one second, wait here. The dash all she could do was frown as Jay ran off. Jay sprinted to the entrance of the Miskeep dungeon, and entered before Anya could even protest. Getting into the dungeon, Jay immediately summoned Sweeper, and took out all the armor he had for his skeletons, comma the helmets. Greaves and Vambrises, along with a hammer for Sweeper. Like usual, he tossed them all on the ground. Make sure the others get their armor. Then follow Blue's command. Jay barked out an order as fast as he could. He then quickly looked around, finding a pile of soul stones and Helvetian rings. Nicely done. He smiled, adding them to his inventory. Soul stone, comma, empty, X24. Helvetian ring, X6. Huh, a little low on rings or maybe we're high on soul stones. Jay thought as he gazed towards the fourth pyramid, seeing traces of the dehexapods having free reign over the stone soldiers. Jay didn't really mind that there were now dehexapods everywhere though. As a necromancer, he basically still has the same battle strategy. He simply had to let his skeletons kill them so he could relax at home, letting everything fall into his lap. It will be an easy life for me, he smiled. Seeing that everything was in order, he quickly left the dungeon, finding a frustrated looking on your waiting outside. You shouldn't have done that, she said as she beckoned Jay to start running up the hill with her. Sorry, it didn't take long at least. He followed her. Anya said nothing as she continued to run up the hill. Further up were groups of other adventurers running to the guild. It was like every adventurer was being summoned, comma, this was when Jay saw a familiar person, slowly scrambling up the hill, much slower compared to the rest. Stephen Jay thought, quinting at him. Jay realized he could totally do something completely malicious right now, comma, but for some reason, seeing the sorry state that Stephen was in, he pitied him. Drew. With a sigh, Jay went up behind him grabbed his arm and put it around his neck. He didn't say anything and Steven didn't even look at who was helping him. Both went as quickly as they could while the horn sounded. Jay had already helped him scramble up a few rocks before Steven even looked at him. Seeing that it was Jay helping him, he almost misstepped and face planted as this was the last person he expected to help. But he didn't say a word. Neither of them said anything. As they got to the top of the hill they stood up straight again. And Jay took Stephen's arm off his neck, ignoring him as he walked to the mana stone gate. Stephen was more confused than Jay about why he did this comma wasn't this the guy he attacked. Shouldn't he be kicking dirt in his face? Spitting on him as he ran by. There was no one else around. So it was clear that Jay didn't do this for his personal image either. Next was paranoia. Maybe it was some kind of mind game meant to mess with his head. Why the fuck did he just help him? Steven wasn't willing to let his guard down, and internally he was holding back a sense of respect from building towards Jay. It was at this point he realized he would actually rather have been spat on. It would make more sense. The good deed didn't make him grateful, but grit his teeth in confusion. I'll pay that asshole back with my own kind gesture. He squinted at Jay thinking this was some sort of game. Jay walked away, deciding not to say anything. Perhaps it was his subconscious telling him to help, but he didn't think much of it. It was a small thing to him, but a huge thing to Steven. As they got to the floating mana stone gate, a small crowd had formed, a bottleneck of people as adventurers slowly went through. The crowd didn't just consist of the adventurers who turned 18 this year, but even a few stragglers left over from last year were here too. 
They were higher level, around level 17, but this was not a very high level, considering they had a year head start, compared to the current adventurers. Slaying monsters in dungeons was just a hobby for them, a casual thing to do. If they were higher level they would have left Losla already in search of higher level areas. Filthy casuals. Jay whispered to Anya as he passed by some of them. She nodded, agreeing with Jay's verdict. As they entered the courtyard, only about 100 adventurers were there, comma, however. Compared to the first training day they all looked much more menacing. People with swords, maces, lances, axes, shields and armor were on the left, while spears, javelins, bows, daggers, crossbows and even some rapiers were on the right. One guy even had a scythe. It seemed awkward to carry, but he had a confident, relaxed look on his face. He was waiting for something exciting to happen, as if this wasn't exciting enough. A few of the guards were standing in front of the association with their arms folded, stopping people from entering the building comma at least until Anya walked up. Come on Jay, she said, gesturing to him. Staff and residents only. A guard said as he saw Anya trying to bring Jay inside. A few adventurers snickered behind them as they went silent, waiting for the look of disappointment of Jay and Anya's face as they were turned around. They were like proud little goblins. That wanted to see others be embarrassed and made to look stupid. In every large crowd there were always a few people like this comma mocking those who would speak up, but never having an opinion of their own. Thankfully, their smirks were quickly removed from their faces as Anya spoke up. He's a resident. He just moved in today actually. Anya said as if it were a matter of fact, as she opened the door and called to Margaret, who was at reception before the guard could even say anything. Jay's a resident, right? She called out while pointing at the guard. Margaret looked back and gave a thumbs up with a smile to the guard. The guard nodded in recognition. Who was he to defy Margaret's orders? There were times when she even ordered Sullivan around. It wasn't like she had much authority, but more that no one wanted to get on the bad side of such a sweet person. The guard turned to Jay and nodded his head to the side, as if to say off you go. Jay obliged with a smile and happily went inside. It felt good to receive a sort of VIP treatment while the crowd of adventurers in the courtyard looked on with jealous glances. Drujuyuo. The horn continued to sound as they went inside. It was relatively quieter inside, but now they could still hear sounds of feet rushing about upstairs. It was like the old building had woken up. Hello, dear Margaret said, as calm as ever. Hi, so what's happening? You'll see soon, dear, it hasn't happened in a long time, but we'll be fine. You're not going to tell me. Anya was slightly shocked, Margaret had been like a mother to her. Margaret only smiled gently, you'll see soon enough. Jay stood by idly, listening to the conversation. It seemed they would have to find out what was happening along with the other adventurers. Chapter 141 After failing to get any additional information out of Margaret, Jay and Anya went outside, standing in the midst of the crowd with other adventurers. Stepping into the crowd, Jay felt a strange coldness on his neck, comma, turning around. He saw Sullivan glaring at him through the window. Was this a warning to protect Anya? Perhaps not to use necromancy. Jay couldn't be sure. Jay awkwardly gave a thumbs up, but Sullivan turned and went away from the window without giving any clues. Jay and Anya both stood out from other adventurers, comma, Jay being level 9, with Anya being the guildmaster's daughter. Thankfully they did not stand out as much as previously, comma, other adventurers were level 8 now, and it seemed that Jay's progress had stagnated, and less people looked at him like an idol now. Little did they know that Jay was actually level 10, and was only 3000 exp away from hitting level 11. Still, it was enough for no one to approach them out of reverence. The crowd finally hushed down as a muscular, athletic man with familiar blue bucks beetle pauldrons exited the association comma it was Michael, the guard captain. HN arm. He cleared his throat before he began a small speech. Adventurers, a threat approaches from the west. We will need your help an enclave of wood elementals approaches. The crowd slowly broke out with chatter for a moment. What the hell is a wood elemental? Can't the higher ups deal with it? Yeah. Can't they just cast one spell and wipe them all out? Michael hushed the crowd and continued. We need you to defend the farmland to the northwest. The rest of the guards will deal with the brunt of the attacks from the southwest, where the forest meets the village Michael continued, before letting any of them talk. We expect them to be from anywhere between level 1 to 60, but mostly in the southwest. 
You should only encounter ones from level 1 to 20. The crowd began to talk again. Level 20, what the fuck? We're going to be slaughtered. Many looked around with fear. Michael spoke up before things got out of hand. Rest assured, we will send some level 25 and higher guards with you. They will focus on the higher level elementals, while you will need to stop the smaller ones. There are many of them, which is why we need your help. I don't want to see a single one of them getting into the village. He gazed at them as if it were a threat. Move out, he yelled. Slowly, the adventurers began to march as they followed some guards to the western fields. The adventurers were all quiet as they marched, a mix of fear and adrenaline coursing through them. While there were nearly 150 of them, many were still low level. Most of them were level 6 or 7, they wouldn't pose much of a threat to some level 20 wood elementals. This wasn't the full force of the Lossler adventurers either, some were still completely oblivious, as they were slaying monsters in dungeons. The crowd was much quieter than usual too comma gone were the ones who showed off their weapons and skills to other adventurers, gone were the braggers and the boastful. No one wanted to be put somewhere that was beyond their capability. Unlike most of the young adventurers, Jay and Anya didn't show any fear, both having serious, focused expressions instead. What is this? What's going on? A bow-wielding adventurer noticed Anya and asked quietly. I'm not sure. Apparently it's happened before. But it must be rare since I've never heard of it. Oh, oh, okay. Thanks. The bow wielder glanced at Jay for a moment before mixing back into the rest of the crowd. As Jay and Anya walked silently, Jay realized that this wouldn't be so simple for him. Based on the looks he was getting from other adventurers, he was expected to be one of the best at killing the mobs, comma, they would finally see the skills which got him to level 9 so quickly. Every move of his would be keenly scrutinized. Not good for someone with a monster class. Obviously he was not going to perform well without his minions around him, and he couldn't just summon them in the event of an emergency. A tension started building in his chest as they walked closer and closer to the west side of Losler. Suddenly he had an idea. With a relaxed smile on his face, he casually turned to Anya. Want to party up? I'll tank and you can focus on dealing damage. He made it sound as natural as saying good morning to someone. At the same time, he said it so that anyone nearby could hear. Sure, Anya smiled. As she said that, a glimmer of excitement seemed to disappear from the adventurer's eyes around him. We're not going to see his skills and abilities. Damn it, one frowned to themselves. Ah, I guess we'll just be clearing some mobs today. Another thought as they pursed their lips. As they were walking, a guard came up to Jay, comma, it was Paul. Though he didn't say anything as he gestured to Jay and Anya to walk along the side of the group. Hey mate, good to see the butchery is up and running again, he smiled. Hey, yeah, I got a new guy working there. Are the sausages alright? They're still good, he nodded before whispering quietly. Anyway, I've been given instructions to protect you and Anya. He said while raising a brow. It was like he was almost asking a question. Huh, perhaps that's why Sullivan was looking oddly at me. Jay wondered. Jay simply shrugged, not giving anything away. Paul was confused because it was clear that Jay and Anya were the strongest adventurers here, comma, not including the ones from last year who had lazily loitered around Losler. Hum. Sullivan probably has his reasons, comma, but I'm trying to keep my sword skill secret from other adventurers, so maybe that's why. Oh, Paul nodded knowingly with a sly smile, I understand, mate, no worries. He winked. Paul just assumed that Jay had some unique swordsman class, and didn't want to be harassed by party recruiters, or forced to enlist in the military. The group of adventurers finally arrived west of Losler. It was mostly farmland here, with mist sheep grazing quietly. Thankfully, planting season hadn't started, and the crop fields were barren, no significant loss to the farmers would happen today. They walked along a path by the fields. Every now and then, some adventurers would split off from the group and go into a field under the instruction of both soldiers and farmers. They entered each field in groups of ten along with a guard, in case there were some higher level wood elementals they couldn't handle. Finally it was Jay and Anya's turn. They went into a grassy field along with eight other adventurers, a guard and Paul. Fortunately not many seemed to notice that Jay and Annie had two guards following them, being too focused on the coming battle. Chapter 142 Entering the field, they could find no real terrain advantage, the land was all flat. 
J questioned the strategy of the association and the formation of the adventurers. It all seemed quite makeshift and not very well thought out. Technically it was, but surely they could come up with something better than this comma plotting 10 fresh adventurers in each field with one guard. Zero other instructions given comma they weren't even sorted into teams. Of course, it couldn't be helped. There simply aren't enough people. Losler was too small and the guards were mostly there to run the association, along with a secondary security role. The two guards didn't seem to worry too much as they stood idly behind them. Damn it. Well, since they won't organize us, it seems I will have to. Perhaps it was Jay's necromancer class, or basic common sense. That made his negative critique of everything grow larger, comma, but a negative critique would not fix anything. He had to step up and command them himself. What good was pointing out a problem without an intention to fix it? Standing amidst the clueless looking adventurers, he clenched his fist to get any stage fried away and spoke. Alright, there's ten of us so this shouldn't be too hard. I want melee classes on my left and ranged classes on my right. They all stood there silently and simply looked at him for a moment, some wondering if they should follow his orders or not. Jay felt the awkwardness rising as they stared at him as if they were zombies. So with a sigh he pointed at one. You, what's your class? Jay spoke with a slight sense of urgency. Dot dot, uh, I'm a shield sword. He held up his ultra-wide sword. Okay? Your melee, stand here. Jay pointed to his left. You, he pointed at another. Ranged. With an eye roll, Jay pointed to his right side. Jay then only had to stare at another one, and they moved to Jay's left. Soon enough, the whole group was diving into two. Okay. Six melee, three ranged. Another melee including myself. Gather around. Next, Jay crouched down and began to write something in the dirt with his gauntlet. It was a simple symbol, causing some to exchange confused glances. The symbol looked like a V with two dots on either side. Dot V. Next, he drew an arrow which pointed into the V from the top comma. This would be where the enemies will be attacking from. Taking into account the high level mobs that would be coming along with this assortment of troops, Jay formed this basic formation in his head. It wasn't some hyper intelligent battle strategy, but it would be better than nothing. Okay. The dots will be where the rangers will stand, while the V will be melee. Just focus on trying to keep the mobs off the rangers, and that will be good enough. When a powerful enemy comes, we will funnel it into the middle of the V, and then let it through for the guards to finish it off. I will be at the bottom of the V using a spell I will damage any high levels that come through. So they aggro on me, running past all of you. After the guards slay it, I will rejoin the formation. Simple right? Jay then looked at the guards, and hopefully they can finish off anything that gets past us. They nodded in response, accepting his plan. Alright, let's get into formation. The adventurers quickly got into a V-shape with Jay at the center. On his left and right were the ranged units, including Anya. Each of them were spaced about 4 meters from one another, comma, enough to back each other up, but far enough to freely swing their weapons. Jay's assortment of human troops was quite varied. One had a two-handed glaive, another carried a mace and shield. One guy just had a big axe, and a girl carried a saber with a buckler. Jay was glad that at least one of them had a standard sword and shield combo. Similar to himself, being different was fine and everything, but it made for a shitty battle formation. Thankfully they were up against wood base creatures, so the axe guy would have an advantage. Jay had to look out for the dagger-wielding girl guessing that she would not do so well when slashing against wood. He had the dagger girl come to his left side, so he could take some of the burden off her during the fight if need be. Anya rolled her eyes seeing Jay do this, but he simply ignored it. There's nothing wrong with my battle tactics he thought, guessing that's what the eye roll was about. On the other side was the saber girl. Thankfully both of the girls by Jay's side didn't seem to notice Anya's disapproval. Next, Jay had the highest level melee classes at the two top points of the V-shaped formation. They would be taking the brunt of the attack after all, so they should be the strongest. The two at the top weren't in too much danger though, as they also had the advantage of the rangers firing from either side, stopping them from being flanked. Speaking of rangers, it consisted of Anya with her crossbow, a tall lanky guy with a bow, and another girl with a composite bow. Ah, that's better Jay smiled, 
feeling like an itch had been scratched as his troop formation plan came together nicely. There was an odd satisfaction about it. A part of him wanted them to line up perfectly, but he decided not to push them too hard. This wasn't their job, and they were human after all. They probably won't be as good as my skeletons, but maybe they'll have some decent abilities to make up for it. Jay silently thought. Hum. He frowned as he looked over at another field. Most adventurers were in groups of two or three. Some were solo, and not even talking to each other completely excluded. It seemed like there was no cooperation at all. It was plain to see that their defense would not work very well. Tactically, it would be like they were getting ambushed, comma, despite knowing enemies were coming. There was no organization at all. In fact, even a troop of new soldiers would have a better formation while being ambushed than these young adventurers did. Damn Jay pitied them. Why don't people ever step up and take some responsibility? Even if people don't listen to you, at least you tried. At least you had put in some effort. He thought while looking at them. Some even seemed to have bitter expressions. It was like they were wondering why no one would step up and lead them, comma, however they themselves still did nothing about it. They would only hurt themselves in the long run. Jay wanted to go over and help, comma, of not to organize them. Then to at least get them talking to one another, it would be better than nothing. They seemed to look like a group of hypno-goats, ignoring each other and wandering aimlessly as they pointlessly looked around at the dirt in the field. Hum, I can only hope they don't die. Perhaps this will be a lesson to them. He shrugged. Next, he checked the other field, and a slight smile came on Jay's face. Nice. He thought, checking out their formation, at least some others are stepping up. Chapter 143. Jay was checking out the adventurers in the other nearby fields. In the other field was Steven. While he had a limp, it seemed that he maintained some leadership ability within himself, comma, and now without being a dick about it either. The limp seemed to benefit him more than it hurt him. It made him wake up and realize he needed people, comma, despite having turrets to defend himself. His formation was a little different to Jay's. Three rock turrets slowly turned left and right as if scanning for threats. They were evenly spaced in a line facing the forest. Steven's team consisted of eight melee users with one ranger. He simply had the turrets interlaced between a wall of melee troops while the ranger stood behind them with himself. He casually glanced back across to Jay's field, but had no expression on his face. While doing so, comma, it was like he was studying Jay. Good to see he's changed, Jay quietly mumbled to himself. Glad to see that he was seemingly a better person now. Some people would respond poorly to a thorn in their side. Sinking into despair, comma, others would be changed and become stronger. The figurative thorn in Steven's side was of course what Jay did to his Achilles tendon. Soon he would learn how to heal it. But for now he had a painful limp. Either way, Jay didn't care. Steven would sink into despair or become a better person. Either way it was a win-win to Jay. The old sneering know-it-all version of Steven was slowly dying, replaced with a more reserved person. As Jay and his new troops waited, they all began to talk quietly, while still roughly standing in formation, remaining prepared for battle. Nice axe. You must have high strength. One nodded approvingly. Thanks, yeah. Nice mace got any passives. It causes bleeding he cheekily smiled back. The dagger girl turned to Jay. So, you're a one-handed swordsman, huh? She smiled. Oh, how did you guess? Jay said playfully as he raised his sword-wielding hand and scratched his head with a single finger. Well, I'll trust you to have my back. The girl chuckled, glancing at the gauntlet Jay had before turning to chat with the others. Jay didn't have his shield out for obvious reasons, comma, it would scare the shit out of everyone and probably raise far too much suspicion. After all, what kind of level 9 adventurer would have a semi-sentient bone shield? That made people feel anxious when it stared at them with its hollow beady eyes. Jay only planned to take it out when absolutely necessary, and stash it away before people would even notice a grayish-white spot appearing in their peripheral vision. Thankfully Jay had also learnt the passive parry ability which had a 2.25% chance to activate, comma, however. This didn't mean he couldn't actively try to parry too. For now this was a preferable alternative to using the shield. The dagger girl turned back to talk more, but Jay heard something. Hang on a second he held his hand up, silencing her as he stared into the forest. A few leaves shifted, blowing out of the forest on the edge of the farmland. It appeared normal. But he was sure he heard something. 
They're coming, Anya said, gazing down the sights of her crossbow, while pointing it at the forest. The sounds were now getting louder, and soon enough they could all hear it. See ah, uh, squeak. Bah. It sounded like wood rubbing against wood, large branches twisting against each other, groaning sounds of bending tree trunks and heavy winds. Next, it sounded like rain. Heavy rain, comma, despite the bright sunny day. Millions of tiny pattering sounds of leaves and twigs on the forest floor all soon creating a crescendo of white noise. That's when they saw the first enemy emerge from a wood line, then the second, then there were hundreds of them all swarming out. Get ready. Paul smiled from behind the group, not sounding very serious at all, as he stood casually with his hands in his pockets. It seemed to be entertaining for him. Jay laid his eyes on the knee-high creatures, though they were just out of the analyzed skill range. The wood-based elementals almost didn't seem real. They were spherical rolling balls of brown sticks, each of the sticks pointing outwards like tiny spears, comma, perhaps distant cousins of sea urchins. Floating around each of them were pieces of brown or yellow bark, which looked like razor-sharp leaves. Periodically, the ball would stop rolling as pieces of the flying bark would clump together above the ball and form an eye shape, before turning back into flying bits of shrapnel again. The ball would then readjust its direction and continue on its journey. Such a strange creature, one of the girls mumbled to themselves. Jay ignored their comment and gave one last instruction. Call out if you need any help, we're in this together. With that, he got into a crouched position, raised his Osane arming sword and prepared. Unbeknownst to everyone else, Jay had some teeth clenched in his hand. Slowly and silently, he was covertly pumping necrotic mana into them. Doing it this way wouldn't let any of his glowing necrotic mana escape comma while the spell itself would simply look like an exploding rock spell of some sort when he launched it. Besides, if anyone asks about his spell, he could just shrug and say privileges of being Villava's student with a haughty smile. The wood elementals rolled over. They weren't very fast. They didn't travel at a high running speed, but more at a brisk walking pace. It seemed manageable for now, so Jay took the time to analyze one of them. Wood elemental comma level 1. HP 10 slash 10. Damage. 3 comma spikes. Piercing. Minus 1 comma spirit bark. Skills. Observe. The wood elemental takes a moment to observe its surroundings and plot its course through the forest. Allows vision. Immobile. Helical frenzy. Each of its three pieces of spirit bark respond to danger, swiftly spinning around its weak wooden body. One damage per hit. Four second duration. 900 degrees per second spin speed. 10 second cooldown. Description. A magical entity that has found it can interact with a specific material, granting itself a pseudo body. There are many bodies like this, but this one is mine. The creature itself wasn't that threatening. Jay could easily end it with one swing of his sword, comma, the problem was how many there were. It was like a sea of these balls of sticks, all the way from the stream running along the northwest side of the farmland to as far as Jay could see south. Little spike balls were appearing out of the forest like a brown tide, threatening to wash over Losler. Shit, Jay thought, seeing the magnitude of the number of these creatures. It was nothing compared to a real war, but this was the largest battle that these young adventurers had seen. It would be a long battle. Crack. Dune. Despite there being no clouds in the sky, the rolling sounds of thunder and snaps of lightning reverberated from somewhere south of them. Jay recalled that the adventurers had been sent to the northwest side, where the battle would be low level and easy while the southwest side was where the brunt of the attack would be. He could only imagine what the southwest side of Losla was like right now, where the battle was the most intense. Druo. The deep horn at the association had continued to sound out this whole time, summoning more adventurers, hoping more would answer the call after leaving the dungeons. Chapter 144. The entire tree line had these little balls rolling out, only to stop for a moment when they used their observe skill before moving forward once more comma towards the fleshy beings. The crossbow and archers on either side of Jay's V formation were already firing as mobs came out of the woodline. They thinned down the numbers of enemies on the sides to take pressure off the axemen and the macemen. Anya found that if she crouched and fired low, the bolt would keep traveling and could take four enemies out before losing momentum and getting lost in a pile of sticks. Finally the wave of wood elementals reached the two adventurers standing at the top of the V formation. Swoosh. 
With a giant cleave, the axe guy took out three of them at once. Meanwhile, the mace guy crushed one with his shield before swinging his mace, taking out two with a single swipe. Pointy sticks were flying everywhere. Make sure you save your skills for later, Jay instructed. Anyone trying to show off while killing these level 1 mobs would simply be wasting their mana. They weren't worth it. For a moment, Jay regretted bringing the dagger girl back near him. She would probably be much more efficient at dealing with the Smalfrey. Oh well. He shrugged. It was too late to change things up now anyway. The glaive guy was behind the mace and shield guy. While the sword and shield guy was behind the axeman, both sides made effective combos. It was good to have two people with shields on their sides, along with two two-handed weapon wielders. All four of them were now putting in the work, slicing, snapping and cleaving sticks in half with ease. So far, Jay didn't even have to lift a finger, being at the back of the formation. They were all dying before they even reached him. Slowly though, a barrier of the dead sticks formed on the side of his allies, causing the wood elementals to roll into a channel towards him. Looking over at the field to the side, he peered at the ten adventurers who weren't in any formation comma for a moment he thought that perhaps they even had it better, each one of them was getting a little piece of the action. As Jay slashed at oncoming elementals, he thought this was much better than simply standing around being bored, so he quickly pushed that thought aside. So far, no one had even taken a hit comma it seemed that the wood elementals would only activate their frenzy ability after taking some damage but they were simply getting obliterated in one hit. They had no chance. Each of them rolled forward, waiting to sense the enemy with their spiky bodies, comma, only to suddenly die and retreat back to the elemental spirit realm. Meanwhile, the broken sticks piled up, acting as a barrier of sorts and stopping them from taking any damage, comma, it would be hard for the balls to even roll over their fellow slain companions. I guess I should be glad it's not that dangerous. Jay pursed his lips, watching the battle. It was all feeling pretty casual so far. Anya was reloading her crossbow. While she noticed Jay, he seemed to even looked a little sad, a little regretful. She could tell that he was bored and wanted to fight a challenge. This was simply a waste of time. Focusing back on the battle, she noticed movement comma large shifting shapes in the forest, getting bigger as they rushed forwards. Jay. Look, Anya said pointing to the forest. Something different to the stick balls slowly marched out of the forest now. It was about the size of a wolf. Its body looked like a large cockroach, while its head was like a deer, comma, without antlers. Both completely made from thousands of tiny twigs. Somehow all interwoven and working together to form these creatures. As it got closer, Jay noticed a strange tormented looking wooden hook under its head. It seemed that it was there instead of a lower jawbone. That can't be good he thought, squinting at it. The hook was spined, sharp and menacing. It was much faster than the stick balls, traveling to them at the running speed of a human. In a matter of seconds it was close enough to analyze, comma, but before, he decided to give some orders for the protection of his team. He did analyze both the axeman, comma, Dan, and the swordsman, comma, Conroy, before barking out orders at them, comma, lest they get confused. Dan, switch out with Conra. Jay yelled before analyzing the new enemy Conra it was a little safer with the swordsman in front, as he had his own shield. Hopefully it would provide some safety from whatever the mouth hook was. Nestling gatherer comma wood elemental dot level 5. HP 32 slash 32. Damage. 5 comma hook. 10 comma pincers. Skills. Lofty collector. The nestling launches its hook high up into the treetops, to gather that one perfect, pristine stick. It reels it back into its internal pincers for either consumption or storage. 5 piercing damage. 10 crushing damage after reel in. The nest must grow. Description. The worker of an elemental nest. Its head comes in many varieties depending on the elemental type, but all of them have the same bug-like body. Careful of its ranged hook attack from the bigger ones. Don't let them pull you away. Jay warned the others, having to yell over sounds of clanging metal, rolling balls and snapping sticks. For a moment he was tempted to step out of formation and help them comma in case this new enemy was too much. Fortunately, they were doing just fine. They didn't need help at all. Jay simply underestimated them. Twang. The mace guy deflected a hook, his shield vibrating, while sending it flying comma coincidentally. The hook landed right next to Jay, a segmented vine, connected the hook back to the throat of the creature. 
With a menacing grin, Jay slashed with all his might, chopping the strange segmented wooden cord between the hook and the creature's mauls. Jay hoped to hear it squeal in pain, but it seemed these creatures didn't have the capability to feel. Instead, it seemed confused. Nice one, the saber girl added, seeing Jay's decisive attack. Dwoosh. Anya released a powerful bolt, ending the creature's silent suffering with a single hit. Jay ignored the X notification, it would be a long battle, so that would just be an annoying distraction. He was getting a slice of the X from each monster killed, since both he and Anya were in the same party comma though the other adventurers Seth and Sun, if they landed an attack on the same creatures. The swordsman, Conroy, was about to be attacked by one of these hooks flying straight towards him. However his sword suddenly glowed a faint yellow, as it filled with energy. Jay was a little disappointed seeing him use an ability so early. But he didn't mind comma he was curious about his ability. Full counter, he groaned as an immense amount of power coursed through his sword, slashing at the incoming hook. Crack! It was sent back at a frightening speed, traveling twice as fast as the hook initial attack of the nestling gatherer. Well damn Jay had to pause for a moment, seeing his powerful ability. He took zero damage and instead dealt even more back to the attacker comma despite being a swordsman, it was like he used a ranged ability. Technically he didn't, but still. The hook whistled through the wind and implanted right into the creature's own head. Naturally, the creature began to reel in its prize, only to start ripping twigs and stick out of its own body. It was its own worst enemy. Everyone grimaced slightly while seeing this. It seemed these elementals truly didn't feel pain. It then began chewing on the sticks pulled from its own head, quite a grotesque sight comma it wasn't just cannibalism, it was self-mutilation. The tall lanky guy with the bow frowned before sending an arrow its way, finally ending its life. Unknown to the self-mutilating wood elemental, it had engaged in psychological warfare. All of them were thrown off for a moment. The distraction of the nestling gatherers has allowed the smaller stickball elementals to do some damage now comma though not much. It was only one damage. But if it was allowed to go on, it would add up after some time. A-H-H-H. An adventurer screamed in the field nearby. A hook was pierced in his shoulder, and he was slowly being dragged towards the sea of spiky stick balls. The more he tried to resist, the more the hook painfully dug into his flesh. Hum. Probably should have made a formation, huh? Jay shrugged with a head shake before focusing on the battle in his own field once more. Chapter 145 A-H-H-H An adventurer screamed in the field nearby. The guard in their field immediately severed the segmented wooden cord. The guard moved so fast that it caused a shockwave of air that even pushed the stickball elementals back for a moment, sending them temporarily rolling away. The power of a level 30 the saber girl next to Jay gasped. Neither Jay nor the saber girl could tell if it was an ability or the results of really high dexterity comma they were leaning towards ability though, as most people wouldn't dump all their attribute points into dexterity, and neither had they seen any other high levels moving that fast. Of course, this simply was speculation. It could even have been the guard's equipment giving him a speed boost or extra ability. Jay glanced back at Paul and the other guard to check their reaction comma they weren't even watching. Apparently they were already familiar with the speed of that other guard. They were chatting to each other as if it was any other day on guard duty. What the fuck Jay pursed his lips, shaking his head at Paul before focusing on the fight. Floosh. The blue rails on Anya's crossbow glowed as another heavy bolt was released piercing deeply into the body of a nestling gatherer, ending it in one hit Jay nodded in approval. Anya had taken one out with every single bolt, significantly taking pressure off the mace shield guy and the glaive guy on the right. The rangers on the left were the composite bow girl and the tall lanky guy. They were doing well too, but were simply not as proficient as Anya comma they had even missed a few times. Perhaps it was Anya's easy access to the ranger training ground, perhaps it was the crossbow weapon. Either way, she never missed. The nine people under Jay's command were working well as a team, but the truth is, the real battle had only just begun. Shit, what the fuck is that thing? The guy with the glaive just finished off a nestling gatherer, as he looked up at something larger coming out of the tree line. Just focus on what you're doing, I'll handle it, Jay calmly said. In truth, he hadn't seen the large thing emerging from the forest yet, but he had to calm down the glaive guy. His calm voice brought a sense of safety in the midst of battle, a sense of security over the group. Each of them nodded and focused on what they were doing, 
The creature emerging didn't stop its charge out of the forest though. It was fast and large. The front part of its body was about the size of a horse. First its head poked out of the trees, but in an instant its whole body was out. Like all other wood elementals, its whole body was made from wood. The difference was though that its wood seemed much older being a dark color. The wood was dark, mossy, and even had bugs running through it. Various spiny sticks as well as the odd leaf dotted its long body. Speaking of the body, it was also bug-like. The body was long and slender with many segmented spiny legs running along each side, similar to a centipede. Like the rest of its body, its upper torso was also made of wood, comma, the only difference was that it resembled a human's. Almost like the centipede version of a centaur. Its torso came complete with a dark, wooden deer head which was covered in more moss and dirt, crowned with a large pair of antlers. A bright green glow radiated from somewhere in its throat, only coming out at its empty eye sockets. It had two long, slender arms which seemed like sinisterly twisted roots, ready to suffocate a victim with the creeping tendrils it was made from. Some of the other adventurers thought that Jay was probably just putting on a show, trying to seem like he wasn't scared. However, nothing could be further from the truth. Oddly enough, it reminded Jay of a dehexapod soul eater comma except, this one wasn't level 133. In Jay's experienced eyes, it was like a baby. A baby which was much stronger than him, but still a baby. Paul had already taken a few steps closer to Jay, ready to back him up in a moment's notice, comma, but Jay held his hand up. Wait a second, we got this. What do you mean we got this? We haven't got this. The Saber Girl saw Jay stopping Paul from intervening. We'll be fine, and if not, we have two guards here. Let's just give it a try. Jay shrugged, there's never going to be a safer opportunity to fight something above our levels anyway. He said as he slashed some more stick balls into pieces. We'll just lure it into the middle of the V formation, and then all attack it. Sound good. Jay called out. Axeman and Shield Sword looked back with a smile, and a nod comma both of them were on board. So far for these two. The battle was going smoothly, perhaps even boring. After slaying another nestling, the shield mace guy looked back. Sounds good. He said excitedly. I guess we don't have much of a choice. The saber girl finally capitulated. Hey, don't worry. It'll be fine. The dagger girl said, then gave Jay a trusting glance before quickly going back to fighting. The guy with the glaive, however, didn't say anything. It was like he was having tunnel vision and only seeing the enemies in front of him. It seemed that fear had taken root in his heart. Oh well. Jay thought uncaringly. They wouldn't need him anyway. The wooden abomination was already well on its way to attack the group. Its speed was perhaps as fast as the skeletons. Each time one of its many feet landed, it crushed one of its own brethren. It seemed that all it cared about was crushing those who were stopping their nest expansion, comma, these strange fleshy creatures. Jay quickly analyzed it, checking its level and health before engaging. If it was too strong, he would just send Paul in. Treat Hectopod, comma, level 13. HP 182 slash 182. Damage. 17, comma, raw strength. 6, comma, antlers. 10, comma, appendages. Armor 120. Skills. Drain. 5 damage per second. 5 HP regeneration per second. Sucks the moisture from its enemies with its root hands. Planted comma passive. Requires 12 seconds to activate. 5 HP regeneration per second. Its legs pierce the soil, growing downwards into the ground, absorbing nutrients for itself. Endless growth comma passive. Immortal? Limitless size. Description. Renouncing its ties to the spirit realm, the elemental has become one with its element, giving itself a more powerful form comma turning both the wood and itself into something in between either of them. However, if its body dies, so will its spirit. Damn, it's actually pretty high level. So much regeneration too. Maybe we can't pull it off. Jay carefully thought to himself, squinting as he gripped his sword a little more tightly. All in all, he didn't care that much about fighting it. After all, if he wanted X, all he had to do was wait while his skeletons roamed about in dungeons. To Jay, this was all just good practice, and finally it was getting interesting. Chapter 146 The Treant Hectopod charged aggressively. In his hand, Jay had readied multiple unstable teeth spells to throw in order to aggro it. The wooden beast had already started charging at Dan the Axeman with its antlers, down comma he was the closest after all. Needless to say, 
Dan was figuratively shitting himself. Boom. Tat 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 tat. Ten. Suddenly a chunk of the treat's chest disappeared. Bits of wood and dirt flew everywhere, leaving only a melon-sized crater behind. Jay's first unstable tooth spell had landed. Some of the other adventurers looked back at him with bulging eyes for a moment, comma, he can use fucking magic. Some of them were thinking. Seeing Jay's unfazed, focused gaze on the creature though, they each returned to focusing on the battle too. The creature stopped its charge completely as it responded to the massive damage. Oh, maybe it can feel pain. Jay smiled. I guess that's what happens when you merge with your element. The creature was charging at Jay now. Jay always had the option to run back to Paul, the high level guard comma but he remained still. Not too worried about the wooden antlered creature bearing down on him. I might not even need my shield for this one if I do. Well, it will be a painful lesson he thought, rolling a tooth around between his fingers. He was counting on the spell stopping the treant in its tracks again. Jay stared down the treant, looking into its hollow eyes with a sly smile, as if he was a hungry wolf, taunting it, challenging it. Both Saber Girl and Dagger Girl took a few steps back as the large creature rushed into the midst of their V-shaped formation comma and just before the antlers impaled Jay, another explosion rang out across the battlefield. Boom. Tat tat tat. Nine. Just like before, the creature's body seemed to freeze up in pain, its threatening charge coming to a complete stop. Jay slyly smiled seeing his plan work. Shring swing shring. Immediately, he began slashing his sword at it. 14.4, 14.4, 14.4. The creature's natural armor had reduced his damage slightly, but it was still plenty. In only a few moments and already it had lost 62.2 HP from Jay's spells and sword attacks alone. HP 119.8 slash 182. Suddenly, the creature slashed with one of its spinely twisting hands, comma Jay, quickly ducked it. Next, it leant forward, while its hand unwrapped into a plethora of squirming, writhing roots. Fuck Jay slashed his sword at its hand to no effect. It was too late however before he realized it was using its drain ability. Dwoosh. Funk. A heavy bolt pierced right through its arm, successfully cancelling its drain skill as its hand reformed into the normal shape. Jay smiled, seeing that Anya had his back. Ting 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 ting. The dagger girl joined the battle. She wasn't going to let Jay have all the fun. From the pain of Anya's bolt, the treat slashed its hand randomly in anger, comma successfully, landing a hit on one of the fleshy sacks. Ah. The dagger girl squealed for a moment. The spiny hand of the treat had seized a chunk of flesh. It had slashed right across her face, dealing massive damage. Her right cheek skin had been ripped off, comma, along with part of her nose. As for her eye, well, there was no eye, comma, it was non-existent. The same went for her ear. She dropped her twin daggers and fell on the ground, writing in pain as she waited for her health pool to fix her up, trying not to touch her face, and just focus on breathing. Obviously, she didn't invest many points in vitality, or she would have been fine by now. Perhaps if her dexterity was higher, she would have been able to dodge its attack too. Despite putting most attribute points into dexterity she was still too slow. It seems she was simply too low level for this fight. Jay would have helped her, but had his hands full as he had the full attention of the woodland best comma she was merely collateral damage. Suddenly its attack pattern changed from flailing its arms randomly in frustration to slamming its root-like hands down as if a giant hammer. Get back. Jay quickly pushed the Saber Girl onto some of the level 1 elementals. She fell right on top of them. She winced from the pain, but was glad Jay pushed her as she saw the treat bring its enlarged hand down where she was just standing, cratering the ground. Dune. The ground shuddered. Immediately Jay slashed at its hand a few more times while it was recovering from its own attack. Shrink. Slash. Ugh, surely it's getting low now. Jay checked its health. HP 21. Slash 182. HP 26. Slash 182. Damn it, regeneration. He said, noticing its legs had grown root systems into the ground. We have to end it. It's almost down. Jay went to slash once more, but the creature had already leaned in for him. While he was distracted by its roots sprouting, its hands unfolded once more, forming a writhing net of vines and roots. Each of its root-like hands grasped Jay. It was like a swarm of snakes, as it quickly wrapped around his head and engulfed his face. 
It wasn't just one attack either. It used its brute strength to crush his chest, while at the same time it activated its drain skill. Now it was healing 10 health per second, while Jay couldn't even call for help. Minus 17, minus 5, minus 5. The Saber Girl only just got back up off the ground after slashing away the stick balls around her. She took both spike damage as well as spirit leaf damage. But the attacks were only skin deep, so she was still battle ready. Seeing Jay's head had disappeared into a system of roots, her eyes bulged comma immediately. She began slashing at the treat. The Dagger Girl was only just recovering. It was made harder by all the level 1 stick balls around her constantly poking at her sides. She was doing much worse than the Saber Girl, as she had loads of tiny wounds all over her body. The Treant was still draining Jay of all fluids from his body. For a moment however, Jay summoned some willpower from somewhere and fought back. He managed to slice at the hand, grasping him comma though he was simply not strong enough. It wasn't anywhere near enough to sever it. 58 slash 182. His sword attack only made it pause its drain for a moment, before its body made a deep croaking noise, and then continued to drain Jay. One of the guards went to step forward comma it seemed that things were getting out of hand. Just wait a moment give them a chance Paul said, holding the other guard by the shoulder, who wanted to rush in and save them all. Dan, we could use some help over here. The saber girl called out to the axeman. Dan and Conroy were keeping the smaller enemies at bay, while the three of them, comma J, Dagger and Saber, dealt with the treat. Just as he ripped his axe from the head of another slain nestling gatherer, he turned around, his eyes bulging at how badly they were doing. Well shit. Chapter 147. The Dagger Girl only had one dagger as she searched for the other on the ground. While she appeared to be drunk, she was actually just heavily injured and healing way too slowly. The Saber Girl was hopelessly slashing at one of the Treant's legs, but despite her slashing the Treant's health was still going up by 2 HP per second. A cold sweat and a sense of urgent fear began building in her. Meanwhile Anya couldn't help for now as she had to focus on clearing the nestlings for a moment. If the Glaive Guy or the Mace Shield Guy were hooked and pulled out of formation, it would be all over. Half of Jay's body was engulfed in the dark twisting vines, spreading from the Treant's hand. As the vines and roots searched for entrances into Jay's body, he was desperately flailing his sword bow. Thankfully, the Axeman was now helping too. Immediately, Dan raised his two-handed axe above his head, his mind suddenly sharpened as his eyes focused keenly on his target. A red glow appeared around the axe, while some red runic symbols appeared on his arms, comma, he was finally going to use an ability in this battle. The head of the axe glowed with a sickly blood red power, as it hungered to decimate all that would dare to stand before it. The treant immediately sensed immense danger behind itself. Unfortunately, it couldn't simply avoid the menacing red axe, since each of its legs were planted deep into the ground, greedily absorbing nutrients. All it could do was look on in fear and wait as it braced for impact. Boom. The two-handed axe descended in a flash, causing a long red arc of the after image. It hungrily plunged itself deep into the treat's wooden segmented hectopod body. For a moment it seemed like it caused ripples to go across the wood. The power behind the hungering red axe kept pushing however, forcing the body of the creature to the ground despite all its legs. Some of its knee joints twisted and snapped, as they gave way to the force of the blow. For a second the creature couldn't move, its body shaken and stunned for a moment. With a menacing grin, Dan stepped heroically on the creature's back, and ripped his large axe back out. He made it seem like he was merely retrieving his axe from a chopping block, though pieces of bark and dirt were ripped out along with it. As he ripped it out, some of the treat's legs shuddered in response. It was like he had cut across its nerves, since they temporarily spasmed uncontrollably before the treat could get them under control again. Feeling its life threatened, the creature's eyes pulsed brighter, and some more croaking noises of twisting wood came from deep within its body. Kru Kree. One by one its legs began to move, then soon another, and another. It was retracting its roots from the ground. It was clear to see that Dan did massive damage. As the creature was moving more sluggishly now, it was like it could barely maintain its form. It had to get mobile, comma, but was it planning to retreat? Or was it now going to go after the powerful axeman? Dwoosh. Funk. A heavy bolt suddenly pierced right through its chest. Anya finally had enough room to turn her focus onto the treat. The treat suddenly froze from the damage its hollow eyes flashing out a bright green light. 
This was its final moment, its last spark of life, comma, and then the light disappeared, its large dark wood body collapsing to the ground with a final thud. The saber girl immediately went and sliced off the treat hand that was still around Jay's head and upper body. C-R-H, C-H-H-R. Jay coughed on the ground for a moment, while he had to rip a long root out of his mouth. Small hair root structures had found their way into his lungs. Another part of the roots had traveled all the way down his throat and into his stomach, and with only a few gags it was out. The Axeman and Saber Girl each went back to clearing the stick balls and the nestlings. The battle was still raging on around them after all. The Dagger Girl was under half HP, but physically fine now, and so stood next to Jay, defending him while he recovered. Jay wasn't okay. He couldn't stand up as his torso was still healing, while his head felt like it was spinning. He had a red notification 2 comma a debuff. Dehydration. 50% less strength, 50% less dexterity. Minus 1 HP per 5 seconds. Jay looked like shit, his eyes were sunken, and his skin was pale. Blood drenched part of his green coat as parts of his stomach were pierced, and his ribs were cracked. Immediately he pulled out his water skin and downed it as quickly as he could. It was a shame though as he ran out after only a few mouthfuls, he hadn't refilled it for a while. Dagger Girl was the closest, so he rolled onto his stomach and grabbed her ankle. Ah, she jumped slightly. Feeling something grab her ankle she was startled for a moment. On the ground was a pale looking man with cracked lips and sunken eyes. If she didn't know any better she would think he was some type of undead. All she could do was stare comma a mix of both confusion and fright. Huh, she said. Dot dot water. He was quiet, his voice raspy and his throat bone dry. She could barely hear much more than a zombie like groan, a strained breath. Perhaps he was an undead. What was that? She leant closer. He looked straight into her eyes with his dead looking eyes. Water. Water. Jay nodded weakly, holding out his hand. His body could heal from HP, but it seemed it still required food and water. Plus, it seemed that his broken ribs were still healing. He needed more time before he could stand again. The girl complied pulling out a plump, fat, juicy looking water skin, beads of glistening droplets covering it. Here you go she smiled, popping the cork out as she went back to fighting. Jay's eyes beamed with joy, lighting up as he saw the glistening sack of fresh stream water. For a moment he was like a baby, suckling on the water skin comma but slowly, his strength returned. Sitting up, he leant against the tree body with a pained groan. He began sucking it in deeply comma instead of a baby. He was now more like a vampire, smiling as he gripped it and squeezing it down his throat. His eyes were looking at it like a hungry wolf as he sucked it dry. As the water level decreased, the water bag sagged and made it harder to squeeze water out, comma, of course, Jay was not having any of this. It was either his life or the water bags, and Jay was taking no prisoners. He heroically lifted it up as if he was Dan lifting up his battle axe, then continued to chug. This battle for water was more glorious than slaying some boring treat hectoped, and Jay would be victorious. The dagger girl gave Jay a weird look as he was being weird with her water skin. She decided she would get a new one after seeing this. The dehydration Deba finally left. But Jay took a few more sips to stay extra hydrated as he drained the water. It was like he was double tapping the water bag corpse for good measure. I told you they could do it. Paul smiled as he put his hands back into his pockets. And went back to idly chatting with the other guard. Yet this was only one treat in massive swarming sea of wood, the battle was far from over, so Jay recovered as quickly as he could. Chapter 148 Jay and his little group of humans had successfully defeated a treat hectopod, all while holding off the level 1 and level 5 wood elementals, constantly swarming them. I told you they could do it. Paul smiled as he put his hands back into his pockets and went back to idly chatting with the other guard. Jay stood up, his ribs finally healed. He didn't really care that he looked weak, was caught by the treat, and had to be helped, comma, but the dagger girl looked at him with sorrowful eyes. She could already imagine the foolish chatter that would soon follow. Wasn't he supposed to be level 9? EFF, strongest adventurer, my ass. Yeah, he was probably just getting power leveled this whole time. Talented, my ass. Still, Jay stood up without a glimpse of worry, handing the water skin back to her. Thanks for that. That drain ability is no joke he gave her a sunny smile. 
It seemed he truly didn't even care that he needed help. There was no shame at all. Why didn't he care about how pathetic he just looked? Oh, oh, no problem, she smiled back. Sorry, I couldn't help you while you were knocked down. That treat was a real pain. Jay said as he slashed three more stick balls in half. It's okay. I could see it was intense with my one eye, she laughed. Jay, another one. Anya called out. She just slayed a nestling with a throwing knife before launching another heavy bolt at the new treat emerging from the forest. Dwoosh. Taking heavy damage from her bolt, the treat began charging at Anya around the side of their V formation, completely out of their killing box. Fuck. Jay only had a few seconds to think, but their problems were only just beginning. Another one. Anya pointed to the forest again. A second treat was emerging. Shit. Jay pursed his lips. He was becoming flustered, only just recovering from fighting one treat hectopid, and now there were two of them comma and to make matters worse. The first one had completely avoided their formation. Jay glanced back at Paul who was watching them back. He was tempted to call for help, but in a split second he made a decision. He quickly looked at the tall lanky bow wielding guy, analyzing him to find his name. Peter comma level 6. HP 100%. MP 100%. Peter, take my spot and fire at the new treat. Keep it busy. Jay barked orders out as he ran over to Anya. The treat had already passed by the mace shield guy and was bearing down on Anya. Its antlers lowered into a charge. Ah shit, sorry Anya he gritted his teeth as he dashed at her. Jay knew he wouldn't make it in time. But still, he flung an unstable tooth at the treat, just as it was about to skewer her. However, instead of impaling Anya, the confused elemental kept charging. Where was the thud it was expecting from hitting her? Was she extremely light? Did it miss somehow? Boom. Tat tat. The unstable tooth exploded against the creature's body. A chunk of wood missing from its side instantly causing it to stop its charge. Meanwhile, Anya had simply disappeared, comma, replaced by a black swirling mist. It seemed that the mist was spinning chaotically in a strong storm, even though there was not so much as a light breeze around today. The black mist itself had no effect on any of the flowers or grass, none of them swaying in the slightest. It was like the mist wasn't even there, either an illusion or simply unable to interact with the physical world. The only thing that seemed to be affected by the black mist were tiny little grey bits of ash, comma, but it seemed that they were part of the corporeal mist itself. Suddenly the ball of mist moved to a new position. It was fast, comma, even faster than the treat, maybe three times as fast as Jay's skeletons. If Jay blinked he would have missed it. Next, the dark mist suddenly burst and dissipated into nothingness. Anya reappeared with her crossbow ready to fire. It all happened in a matter of moments. Treat charging Anya, comma, Anya disappearing into mist, comma, Anya. Suddenly reappearing further away and firing her crossbow. Somehow, she became an untouchable shadow, avoiding all damage and getting into a safer position in the very back of the field. Jay looked at the stunned creature. It seemed to be as confused as he was. Dwoosh. Funk. Unfortunately for the wood elemental, it was given no time to think as another heavy bolt pierced the creature, comma, this time landing right in the center of its large deer-shaped blackwood head. Nice, Jay smiled, jumping into battle as well. Damn, a headshot wasn't a critical hit Anya said, a little frustrated as she went to reload her crossbow. All this time she had been trying to find the creature's weak spot, comma, the critical hit area, where she could do double damage. Not the head, not the chest, not the body. Don't tell me her eyes traveled over the lower parts of the creature. There were only two more places she hadn't attacked, though it may cause everyone to grimace a little. Jay had no time to think about Anya's black mist ability, as he dashed in to deal damage. He had to get the monster's attention so Anya could continue to freely attack. Asklin. A burst of air and dirt exploded from Jay's boots, as he dashed across the field, almost matching the speed that Anya was going while in her black mist form. Before, the creature ignored Jay, and had prepared to charge again, comma, but now Jay was already in front of it. Shring, swing, clang. 14.4, 14.4, Jay took it completely by surprise, as he opened up wounds across its chest, some glowing green sap tainting his Osane blade. Jay didn't outdamage Anya by any means, but the creature would have to deal with him, if it wanted to move towards the main target. A A H H H H. A shrieking squeal came from behind Jay. Oh no, stop. 
The saber girl called out. Dune. The squeals from both girls was followed by a deep booming sound. Jay had his back to the V formation, so it came behind him comma followed by a gust of wind. Jay quickly stepped back from the fight and glanced behind him in case he was in danger. Something was definitely wrong. A string of organs and blood was strewn across the second treat hectopid's antlers. They had fallen out of Peter as it lifted him up into the air as if he were a trophy. The antlers weren't just inanimate either, comma, each of them could move around, slicing up whatever was caught on them, digging around in Peter's flesh. Jay had no thoughts, he was only glad that wasn't him. The drain ability was much more preferable to whatever this barbaric brutal torture was. Peter's eyes had rolled back into his head from the pain, his body spasming on the antlers, only causing more damage. It seemed the higher level a monster was, the more brutal it could be. This was just before Paul had intervened, pulling out a large glaive, and ending the creature swiftly in one precise attack. This was the dune sound they all heard. Paul had instinctively pulled out his own weapon to help comma not one of the flimy metal spears given to all the guards, but the one he personally used in dungeons. The glaive blade was a deep glinting blue color with white clouds that gently traveled across its surface. The shaft was a pure white polished stone of some sort. It was clearly a magical weapon found in some high-level dungeon, an older adventurer would eventually find one if they persevered enough. The other adventurers were similarly all standing around watching for a moment, as the spike balls were about to prod them comma the glorious display of viscera interrupting the flow of battle. Paul cut off the head of the treat and brought Peter down from the antlers. He wasn't too worried as Peter still had 32% of his HP left and would just need some time to heal before rejoining the battle. That was if he wasn't psychologically damaged anyway. Unfortunately, Jay didn't have time to keep looking, comma, the treat was right behind him, and about to slash. Jay had no time to dodge, comma, he quickly pulled out Deathwalker's sentry. Thud. S-C-R-R. -R. As the heavy root hands connected, Jay was pushed to one side. Bone dust scraped away as the sentry's shield took most of the damage. Minus four. Jay quickly stored it in his inventory again before anyone noticed, comma, everyone except Anya, of course. Dwoosh. Funk. Another arrow flew in, connecting with its target, comma, this time aimed a little lower. Jay looked back, giving her a confused look as if to say why. Just why? Anya only frowned the rear then. She guessed as she pursed her lips, already feeling out of her depth. It would be better if it just has no weak point then I wouldn't have to do what I'm about to do. She mumbled to herself as she reloaded another bolt. Thankfully, the treat hectopid went down before she could fire again. It only needed a few more hits from Jay, and it collapsed as if it were an oversized puppet. Not bad, Jay smiled. He and Anya had killed it without anyone else attacking it. They would get all the X for this one. Both of the two new treat hectopids were slain, so they slowly returned to Jay's V formation. Of course, Peter was still recovering. B R comma K C R O R R U. More thundering noises came from the south, soon followed by some deep earthly groaning noises. Seems like they're winning. Jay thought as he returned to his position at the bottom of the V. The adventurers of Losso all had roles to play. While they were not as strong as the guards in the southwest, what they did was just as important. More of the small stick orbs rolled over and were easily culled, the barrier made of their dead bodies getting larger. It wasn't hard to kill them, but fatigue was starting to set in. The energy levels of the party were dropping slowly. The only ones who seemed to be doing okay were the rangers along with the other ones with high dexterity. The dagger girl, the glaive guy and the saber girl. To the adventurers, it seemed like the battle was almost over as less of the stick balls were leaving the forest now. Everyone just wanted to sigh in relief. No way Dan said, raising his axe. What the? What even is that? They were all wrong. That battle wasn't over. A powerful enemy made its way onto the battlefield. Chapter 149. Villada gently floated above the wooden town houses on the south side of Losla. As a telekine with strong telekinetic power, he could make whatever he wanted into a weapon, today. His choice of weapon was a tree he ripped up from the ground. He thought it was quite fitting to use wood against wood. What was that old saying again? You can't fight wood with wood. Something like that. Oh, who cares? Villada shrugged, today he would prove it wrong. For him, the battle seemed pretty boring, as he was a much higher level than the wood elementals. 
With a flick of his wrist, his floating tree thrashed, bludgeoned, squashed and punctured all the treats charging out of the forest. They were fast, but he was faster, comma, he didn't even have to look as he could just sense them with his high-level mana sensibility. Slowly, his weapon's branches were being snapped or ripped off in battle, and soon enough it was nothing more than a bare log, with many indentations traveling all over it. The trunk weapon could barely hold together under the pressure Villador was exerting on it, and the battle here was many times more dangerous compared with the Northwest. Instead of the level 1 wood elementals, the weakest monsters here were the treat hectopods, comma, and there were just as many swarming out of the tree line. Sometimes some larger wooden creatures had come through the forest, but he didn't so much as glance at them before smashing them into the ground with his log. Treat hectopods, nest spores, cellulose arbiters, comma, it was all the same to him. Just weak enemies that needed crushing. Some of the treats had survived being pounded into the earth, climbing out to continue their wooden crusade, comma, only to be squashed again for good. It was an easy thing for Villada, and most of his focus was on his black cube back at the association. However, unlike usual, some of his thoughts were about Sullivan. How do I ask him to make Jay stay, he thought. Money. Hum no. Sullivan is doing fine should I say Jay is dangerous. Maybe well we already know him too well. He's clearly no threat. He pursed his lips crushing another treat with the end of the log. He was getting annoyed now as he thought of ways to keep Jay at the association. Gritting his teeth in frustration, he crushed another before it even left the forest. What other choice do I have a threat seems like the only way. He shook his head, annoyed there was no other way, comma, in his mind he had no choice. Of course, he could just give up and walk away, comma, but that would be like dying to him. The cube had become his purpose, his reason. His eyes glowed blue with resoluteness as he crushed another treat into firewood, twisting the end of the log on its body, as if he was putting out a cigar. Hum, but how do I threaten someone more powerful than me, he thought as he squinted, staring at larger wood elementals coming through the forest. Gone was any allegiance he had for Sullivan. He only thought about the cube. He lived for the cube. He would die for the cube. He would worship the cube. Everything was for the cube. Of course, it was a potato-shaped lump now as it had more opportunities to absorb Jay's ambient necrotic mana. It was more accurate to say that Villada lived for the potato. He would die for the potato. He would worship the potato. Everything was for the potato. Seeing some worthy enemies coming, he prepared himself. Villada snapped his weapon, the log into two pieces to prepare for the higher level elementals now moving in. Huff huff huff. Matheson breathed heavily as he exited the Feral Plains dungeon, dripping with sweat. He was on the verge of getting a heat stroke from that hot summer dungeon. Today, it was a sunny day in Losla, but it was quite cool outside being another early spring day, so it was a refreshing relief for Matheson. Druo. The war horn at the association continued to bellow out across Losla and its surrounding forests. Hum. He squinted, I better go back. He furrowed his brows, looking up in the direction of the guild, putting his rapier away. He began to walk as he was still catching his breath, soon enough he began to run again. Unfortunately for Matheson, the Feral Plains dungeon was located south of Losler in the forest, comma close to where the elemental attack was coming from. Soon enough, Matheson came face to face with a treat hectopod, something he couldn't even hope to kill. Not alone at least. Before he could react it was already charging at him. HMH he exhaled in frustration, annoyed at the inconvenience. He dashed to the side, easily dodging the hectopod, and ignored it as he sprinted back along the path. Thankfully he caught his breath, so now he could dodge and run at his normal speed, comma, a swift sprint wherever he went. The hectopod looked around in confusion after it slowed down from the charge, comma, where the hell did that weird non-wood life form go, question mark, comma, it had the moisture that it wanted. Matheson was sprinting away guessing that the forest monster would have something to do with the horn that was blasting. As he got closer to Losla, sounds of power rolled through the forest. Crack. Crew. E -r 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 -r. A bolt of lightning struck somewhere nearby as thunder rumbled out. Matheson couldn't sense mana very well, but despite that, he easily felt it wash over him. It was obviously a magical spell. The sky was clear and sunny today. Not a single cloud was in the sky. So along with the feeling of powerful magic, this pretty much confirmed it was magic. As he closed in on Losler, 
He finally saw the sheer destruction caused by the magic lightning. Burnt and charred wood elementals piled on top of each other. The bodies of many tree hectopids among other larger wooden elementals, which were now unidentifiable. Above the mountain of elemental corpses, a thick dark cloud hung, humming with menacing power. Matheson didn't see the magic cloud before, since it wasn't high in the sky. It hung lowly, a little lower than the treetops. He immediately stopped running, just outside of the wall of charred corpses. They would have definitely caught on fire from the lightning, but it seemed the wood was filled with too much moisture to catch a light. Matheson heard heavy stamping footsteps behind him, sensing danger closing in. He didn't have to guess to know what it was, comma, he quickly dodged to the side without even turning around. He didn't have to guess what it was, he already knew it was still chasing him. Chapter 150 Matheson critically dodged the treat as it charged into the mound of smoldering corpses. Almost like a choreographed dance, he dipped to the side at the last second, as the treat came charging past, its menacing antlers pointing forward as they searched for his flesh. He sneered at it with a sly smile as it charged harmlessly by, directly into the pile of corpses, comma, of course. He did tap it with his sword as dashed by. Crack. For a moment Matheson's ears were ringing, his vision all white as power from the spell storm descended before him. Right in front of him, lightning had suddenly crashed down onto the treat. A pure white flash crackled through its body for a moment, as it was stopped in its tracks, before collapsing helplessly onto its own kind. Only a few more steps forward, and that would have been me he thought as he looked whimsically at the steaming wood. He was glad that he got some easy X from simply tapping his rapier on its ass as it passed by. The small cloud spread out left and right, it was long and slender, wrapping around the edge of the village. Surely it doesn't wrap around the whole village, he thought as he gazed at the strange long cloud. Unfortunately, he couldn't see past the ever-growing mound of charred wood bodies so he couldn't wave at anyone on the other side of the cloud for help, while the rumbling crackles of energy stopped and chance of them hearing. He would simply have to walk around. After hearing some deep booming sounds coming from the left, he simply turned right and began running. There's no point wasting time thinking about which way to go. Just make a decision and go with it. He nodded to himself. Similar to the cloud, the wall of charwood elemental corpses, continued around the south side of Losla, trailing under the crackling cloud. Since there was no path here, Matheson had to periodically slash down small plants and young trees to keep running at a reasonable pace. Eventually he found the end of the cloud. It stretched to the very southwest corner of Losla. The first person he saw was a lone guard, standing near two corpses of the treats, comma, but compared to the pile of dead treats Matheson saw before, this was nothing. It seemed that the guard was simply here to kill the old wandering treat that made it around the defensive storm. He immediately looked up at Matheson. Hey, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be here. A guard yelled, seeing the young adventurer run around the side of the dark cloud. I was in the feral plains dungeon. What's happening? Why the monsters? Why the death cloud? Matheson pointed up. Ah shit, the feral plains dungeon. The guard looked down in frustration. I knew we had forgotten one. Immediately, the guard pulled out a short-range communication crystal, ignoring Matheson as he channeled some mana and spoke into it. Michael, southeast corner here. No one was sent to the Feral Plains dungeon. The guard held a single finger up at Matheson, gesturing to him to be quiet. It was completely silent for a moment as the guard stared at the crystal. Go. Now, a gruff voice finally answered him. Without hesitation, the guard stashed his crystal and began charging off into the forest. Ho, oh, what about me? Matheson called out comma only to deaf ears. The guard completely ignored him and kept running. He was on a mission. Well, I guess someone has to watch this part of the town. He pursed his lips with a shrug. This was how Matheson came to be where he was now comma guarding the southeast side of Losla. Every now and then, a treat hectopid would come charging, but Matheson would simply stand in front of the spell storm before dodging to the side. The treats would continue charging recklessly, confusion was their last thought, before their existence was ended by a fearful blinding flash. Of course, Matheson would always give them a light tap with his rapier as they charged past. MMM. He nodded easy X. He smiled as another treat was filled with crackling flashes of energy and executed by the unrelenting storm. Despite the easy exp, a part of him was annoyed that he had to do this. 
since the guard just ran off without anyone else to come and replace him. Just how stupid was this guard? He wondered. Countless rumbles and cracks of lightning sounded out from somewhere else on the battlefield. The storm seemed to be claiming the lives of many helpless treants that dared to pass under it. But this was when he noticed something. Something that caused a tight feeling in his chest. Each time a rumble or a cracking sound rang out, the cloud would shrink slightly. Matheson only noticed it after he baited another treat into the cloud, comma, he literally was standing on some charred wood remains, comma, somewhere that the cloud was covering earlier. It's definitely shrinking, he thought. For the first time in a while, a sense of fear gripped his heart. Matheson's response to fear question mark, comma, he clenched his sword tightly and controlled his breathing. This is nothing but a fleeting feeling. What matters is strength. He told himself repeating it a few times until his heart and breathing were both under control. Any emotions at a time like this would only cause problems. He had to think clearly. As time went by and the battle raged on, Matheson still had no clue what was happening. It was clear that the storm was a defensive spell. That the adventurers had been evacuated from the dungeons. And that they were under attack from some strange wooden creatures. For all he knew, the village was being evacuated right now, and he was foolishly standing here defending alone. What made matters worse was that the storm was shrinking even faster. Now, comma, either the spell was wearing off, or the mana in it was close to running out. He couldn't be sure. At first he had to move at a few steps every few minutes to stay next to it. Then a few steps every few seconds, comma, soon a slow walk, and now it was a brisk walk. Hum, I'll be running soon enough. He gave a concerned look at the quickly shrinking cloud. This is the end of this video. Next chapters are coming, so subscribe to be noticed. Heaver a wonderful day and come again.